Call to order. Do we have a quorum? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And the first order of business is reorganization. And we need to elect chairman, vice chairman, and a clerk. So I would like to no nominate Julie to be the next chairman of the finance committee. Second. Second, please. Second. It's moved and seconded. Does Julie consent to becoming the chairwoman? We're okay. Not that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yes, um, she did. I got forewarned. <laughs> okay, so who who was the second? I'm trying John to. John Koreski. Okay, thank you. So all those in favor? I'm, I'm supposed to take a roll call vote since this is my. We, need, yeah, we do need. Roll call. Okay, so who have we got here? Jeff John? Upton. Jeff Upton, and I'll vote yes. Okay. John Pachurk and I'll vote yes. John Pereski votes yes. Yeah, okay. James Cambius votes yes. Welcome, James. Thank you. Hi, James. Allison Van yes. Allison votes yes. Skip Billy votes Chalfin. yes. Can I vote yes? Yeah. You have to. Oh, yes. <laughs> Julie votes yes. It's, so it is unanimous. And I just spade it out. No, we can hear you. Okay. Well, that's his polite way of saying he's leaving. You're in charge. <laughs> it's either, a, it's <laughs> either congratulations or condolences, whichever your choice. Seven. Can I, before we move on, can I just get a, a quick list, unless we want to elect a clerk and have it be somebody else next, in which case I won't worry about writing down who's on the committee and who's here today. <laughs> Everyone's here today. Okay, and there's James who I don't know, so I just wanna make sure. Yes, I just got sworn in uh, uh, Friday. So it's Skip, myself, James, it looks like John Pereski, Jeff Upton, Julie. John Pachurk. Jack, okay. John Pachurk. Jack Pachurk. I've got you all, thank you. Could, could, before Julie takes over, could we twist your arm a little bit, Allison, to have you stay on until July 1st? Um, I would second that. <laughs> I'll make it third. My, I mean, I'll do whatever you guys need. My, um, my plate is extremely full and my quality is likely to suffer. Um, but I can, I can try. If anybody else is willing to take minutes, I would be eternally grateful, but, um, but I'm, I'm, you know, more grateful to not be the chairperson. So. <laughs> so do you want a motion to make her the, uh, clerk? Julie, it's yours. Yes. <laughs> okay. I make a motion that we appoint, uh, Allison as our clerk. Second. John Pereski seconds. All right, any discussion? Congratulations. <laughs> All right, let's Again. Off. Now we need a roll call vote to, to vote that. So I'll start Jeff off. Upton. Kirk, I vote yes. Okay. Jeff Upton, yes. John Pereski, yes. Julie Chalfant, yes. Skip Olmstead, yes. Allison Vandervelde under duress says yes. <laughs> you could say no, but you'll still be the. You know. I know I'm outvoted, so. <laughs> All right. Um, do we have any nominations for vice chair? So, J John. Yeah. Sure. John You've been vice chair. Well, how about John Churik? You've been vice chairman for a long time. Do you want to stay on that role? No, I prefer not to because I'm already in charge of DDIC. You're only the vice chairman there too. <laughs> I know, but I'm in charge because we don't have a chairman. <laughs> Kip, I've been the vice chair for a couple of years. I'll continue to do it. 
with, um, with the understanding, I'm only going to manage me meetings. That's absolutely, so, absolutely. So That's Julie doesn't I'll show up. I'm uh, John Pereski as vice chairman. Where, uh, <laughs> he's, he's, I'll he's, second that. I want to amend the motion. <laughs> not allowed. I'm not. I'm not going to be chair outside of helping to run a meeting. Isn't that so, all there is? So if Julie's not here, I'd be happy to run the meeting. Other than that, maybe you need another vice chair. That's that's John. That's typically all there is, and and it, in the past few years, it's only been when I've been late getting here that uh, somebody has had to take over. Or what happens if Julie has to leave? I up and quit. Yeah, whatever. I can't. That does. I, I want the minutes to reflect that I don't automatically become chairperson. Yeah, that's, but I don't know what true. that means. Hmm? If the chairperson's not there, the vice chair always takes over, period. You don't have to like it. You just got to accept the responsibility. No, I don't want to become, I don't mind running a meeting, John, but I don't want to become the official chairperson. Yeah, but you look like an official chairperson. You're in a chair. That's right. <laughs> Your first order of business could be to elect a new chair. Right. <laughs> happens. You have power. That's a good point. The <laughs> well, there, you, there you go. That's simple enough, isn't it? Are we okay with that? Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Because you're right. It's a good point, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? No, let's do our roll call. I vote yes, Julie. John Pachurik, I'll vote aye. Jeff Upton, I'll vote aye. Skip Olmstead. Abstain. <laughs> Skip Olmstead, I'll vote aye. Allison Vandervelt and I can vote yes. Jim Cambius, I vote yes. So next on the agenda appears to be appointing a finance committee rep to the CIPC. For those of us new to this, what is the CIPC? Great question, James. They're the ones that are spending too much money right now. <laughs> the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, is that what? I know what it is, I just don't know what it stands for. Capital yes. Improvement. Yes, that, right. that's what it is. It's a Capital Improvement uh, Planning Committee. And uh, I'm Jeff Upton. And if no one else on the committee is interested in doing that, then I will volunteer to sit on the committee, but I do not want to be a co-chair or a uh, clerk for notes. On the CIPC? Yeah, on the CIPC. I'll nominate Jeff Upton for that committee. John Pereski seconds. We going too fast, Allison? I'm having a prop. My, this is one reason why I hate doing minutes is my, um, notes are not my I'm having an IT problem which is making me crazy so you guys are going to get minutes that are maybe jumbled but the information will be there they're a lot better than my yeah. minutes would be. So, thank you I don't know about that today hey, Allison your work notes are better than most most people's so <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> It's just not working today. It's um, it's a it's a Microsoft program on an um, Apple device. Uh, it's having yeah. connection, so it I may lose some things, but um, the meeting's being recorded. So, who who made the nomination? I did, John yeah. Pachurik. Thank sure. you. And uh, John Peretsky seconded. Okay. No, oh, maybe Trevor should be the secretary. Can I add a little bit of information for James? Um, I'm just, I know I'm cutting in here, but so James, the, the CIPC is a, is a group that gets together. One's appointed from the school committee. One's appointed from um, the select board, um, finance committee. I don't planning know board. 
is there a planning board as well? Yeah. And so, and so if anybody in town, um, any of the boards or departments have a request that's over five, uh, over ten thousand dollars, or something longer term that's not kind of a budget, you know, just an operating budget thing. It gets put on the uh, capital and planning improvement committee. A request comes in, and you'll see some tonight when we meet. Um, and and that board kind of evaluates: is it is it something you know that makes sense and is worthy? Not do we have the money for it because that's the finance committee's decision. But um, but it, it does it meet all the requirements of that bylaw, and then um, it goes up for a vote, and so, you know it may or may not pass. And and then that board recommends it to town meeting, and they produce a report based on the, on those capital items. Thank you. Yep. And so the goal is like a longer term, steadier plan for capital expenditures. Correct. It's a, it's a, it basically you do a budget year of capital improvement plan for the coming year, but you also do, you try to anticipate costs of major projects or purchases, uh, over the next four years. So you're basically generating a five-year capital improvement plan. So uh, the town, the finance committee, select board, and everybody will have a little general idea of the needs that are coming down the road and how we're going to possibly try to finance them. So I think we have a motion on the table and we haven't voted yet. Is that where we are? Correct. Any further discussion? All right, let's do our round robin. Julie Chalfant, yes. John Pachurik, aye. Allison Vandervelden, yes. James Cambius, yes. Gib Olmstead, yes. I got cut out. I lost my Wi-Fi. I don't know what we're voting on. We're voting the on Jeff Mead on the CIPC. John Pereski, yes. Jeff Upton, yes, if nobody else wants to do it. I don't. We, we all want you to do it, Jeff. <laughs> yes, we do. <clears throat> you have skills. Um, and then... It's not on our agenda and we don't need to vote on it, but our personnel committee person is John Pereski, right? Are you on the personnel? Yes. Rep, okay. I thought I remember that. Thank you, John. Yes. You're welcome. Um, well, we are just blazing through. We're done. <laughs> Five o'clock meeting with the select board. So do we any items? We have 12 minutes left. Do we have any items not anticipated that we want to discuss? About the you? meeting times and locations. I think it would be good, to, especially with some new members, to just have a chat, quick chat about when we may be able to meet because it's changed over the last few years. And um, okay, my my schedule is much less constricted and more flexible than last year, but they're still, oh, good. yeah, I'm not in school anymore. So that helps a lot. Um, uh, but I do sometimes have evening meetings. <clears throat> so it would be helpful if we have an idea, if we can either pick something recurring or, um, or go through each month and pick some dates so that I can block them out now. Okay. Does anybody else have recurring issues or times that do, do not work or I don't have any times that specifically that do not work uh, I, I would agree at least I think the conversation was it would be nice to have some specificity uh, as to days or dates uh, so let me just throw it out uh, we had a number of years were successful when we met on Tuesdays. Uh, so I would like to uh, throw that out as a, as a good date to meet and hear what anybody else has to say. I have a recurring meeting every second Tuesday, but otherwise Tuesdays are a perfectly fine day for myself. What time are your meetings? Or 
Uh, five thirty. Till. Uh, seven thirty, I think. It's almost bedtime, then, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the board meetings. They're not as long as the finance committee meetings, though. <laughs> A uh, quick question. Mm -hmm. As far as we may be under the gun uh, committee wise, as far as time with the annual town meeting. And I'm just wondering if Tuesday would give us, if we needed to schedule an emergency meeting, would Tuesday give us enough time to get that posted if we had to meet the same week? And it's just a question. If if people don't think we're going to be, uh, you know, up against it, come towards the end of the fiscal year here, then that's fine. And I don't mind. Whatever day works for everybody is fine with me. I'll do the best I can to match schedule. You're saying if we met on a Tuesday and we said we need another meeting that week, we'd have to post it the next morning and we'd have to meet on Friday. 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 Right. So that's why I would, I was just wondering if with Monday, if we get in, you know, I'm just trying to think down the road. If we met Monday, would that give us a little more time so we could post and meet Thursday if we needed to instead of Friday? Is if needed, that may, that may never come up, but I just figured I'd throw it out there. Casey, how does that work for the Zoom scheduling? We have to look at the Zoom schedule because we only have two Zoom accounts. Mm -hmm. um, but the key piece that everybody, I think I've been sending the emails out, the select board is gonna discuss postponing. They've already postponed town meeting, but set a date of possibly June 12th, which is a Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, because, And I had a conversation with the other town administrators in Union 38 and Superintendent Modesto today. and the school is even more up against it than we are to some extent because they have a statutory deadline for their budgets and Darius is very unsure as to whether they're going to be able to meet that deadline because there's so much uncertainty around their revenues and state aid so everybody should be aware of that i think you know the board and i had 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 this conversation back in december because we were afraid this rollout of the budget was going to be very slow and it's turned out that there's still a lot of uncertainty around revenues and school aid in particular. So the revenues that the school actually has in house, but also the revenues from the state. So um, I realize that we have deadlines in the bylaws, but unfortunately nobody could have predicted the pandemic and the effect the pandemics had in almost a year. So I think First, we have to look at our Zoom schedule because we have recurrent meetings that are monthly, biweekly. Um, and then keep in mind that this is the most unusual situation I think anybody in the Commonwealth has had to deal with in recent memory in terms of pulling together a budget. What's that deadline for the school? Statutorily, it's March 31st. And actually the question came up about whether that could get postponed through a special act. They've changed through special acts. They've changed a number of things in the last year. Um, and the question came up in our, in our management meeting today, but I don't know where that goes. I haven't asked Darius if he's reached out to anybody. And to his comment when the question came up today about budget struggles, Western Mass is struggling in a different way than Eastern Mass and Worcester County is. So are, I should say. Um, so it's, it's kind of a, it's a different struggle for us and the state time, they may not listen, they may not acknowledge, but he warned me and all of the other town administrators that if they don't, they'll have a draft budget, but it may not be solid until later on um, after at least the house budget comes out and they don't expect the house budget until April at the earliest. Casey, yes. when you, when you say statutorily, is that state law? Is that what, uh, 
That was what Darius said. I thought we had a, a requirement in the agreement as well, but I think that might reference the statutory agreement. I don't know what the MGL references, Skip, but I could probably see if Darius can get it for me. At some point in time, I think it'd be worth, or to, or to see whether. I know it's in the agreement, but I think it reflects the statute. So I can send him an email. Uh, how about each town? Does each town have a, and it, is that part of the, the state requirement that each town needs to have their school committee submit the budget? Uh, That's my understanding, Skip, Okay. from what he said. All right, so I'm just looking at the town website and it looks like there's a bunch of meetings on Tuesdays, but Mondays don't look too bad. Do Mondays not work for anybody on the committee? Um, I just have a recurring meeting on the fourth Monday of every month. Okay, we should be able to avoid that. That's pretty good. John Pachurk, I have no problem having a meeting any night that you schedule. Usually yeah. we've done it on Tuesday. Monday's fine, Wednesday's fine, or Thursday's fine. So anything you schedule is fine by me. Okay. John Pareski? I have personnel committee the third Monday of every month. Uh, okay. So third and fourth Mondays are out. This is getting challenging. I have a lot of evening meetings in my life these days. I need one of your, your math and science best calendars. Yeah, we could do Tuesdays and just block the, the ones I'm not available or somebody else wants to take minutes. It's just one Tuesday per month that I'm not available or that I can count on not being available. Okay. It either so that was the second the Tuesday? Second Tuesday of every month, I am not available. Um, because it's not the third or the fourth, we could make it the sec the first the second Monday of the month, you'd like the, the Monday before the second Tuesday, we could meet instead um, if we wanna block things weekly and then eliminate them. I just wanna make sure that I have time blocked, otherwise okay. it gets taken up. Um, second Tuesday, does anybody else have a problem on Tuesdays? No. Nobody has a problem on Tuesdays. Um, We'll tentatively pick Tuesdays that are not the second Tuesday and hopefully not conflict. Is the um, assessors meeting a regular every first Tuesday? Does anybody know? Yes. It is. But I don't know if it's is... the, they have regular they have regular Tuesday meetings, and I don't know whether it's the first Tuesday or what, but they do. It, it should be every other Tuesday that they meet. I think it's bi-weekly, Julie. Okay. So if we met at the same time as them, we could steal the second Zoom. We get there first, they can. As soon as you pick it, I will talk to Jennifer. She manages both the Zoom accounts. So if we have something, what I would like to do is if you guys settle on something, I'll send her an email and ask her to check the Zoom account now. Let's pick so first and morning. third Tuesdays at what time? 6 p.m. I'm on that much more flexible. I don't see patients anymore, so I could do as early as 4 30. And as I could I could go 4 30, that's like a five hour meeting. <laughs> I know, right? We have that we have the cutoff at the end, right? <laughs> we have to go all night. Julie, Jeff Upton, and whatever works best for everybody as far as Tuesdays are fine, and whatever time works best for everybody. As I said, I'll just match my schedule with whatever we determine here. Let's say first and third Tuesday at 6 p.m. At 6. I don't hear any arguments against that. All right, I'm going to send Jennifer an email, Julie. And, and what time was that? At six. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Okay. That's what fine with me. Day? Which days again, please? First and third Tuesday. 
And I have budget books put together for everyone. If you would contact me and I can make arrangements to meet you outside and get it to you. Okay. Thank you, Brenda. Sure. John? So for your first and third Tuesdays, but what about the other weeks? I'm missing something. Yeah, some months have five of a particular weekday. No, but what um, about the second and fourth? So we may have conflicts with other meetings, John. So we're not going to, we'll just meet twice a month. Is that what we're saying? Right now. Huh? I just want to make sure I understand. I don't, I'm not opposed to it. Um, let's start with that. And then if we need more, we'll add more meetings. That okay. does raise the question of this month because this is the second Tuesday. Today's oh, sorry, this is the second month. This is the second Monday. Monday. First and third. So, um, So we'll meet next week. We'll meet next week. Okay. I'm gonna look at my calendar and make sure I can make that. <laughs> That's Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> we'll have to wear our beads. All right, so I think it's five o'clock. We need a motion to continue our meeting to the next meeting or something. Anybody like to move that? I make a motion to um, continue this meeting as a select board CIPC meeting. John Pareski I'll second. second that. Okay, quick roll call. Yes, John Pareski. Yes, Julie Chalfin. Yes, Jeff Upton. John Pachurik, yes. Skip Olmstead, yes. yes. Alice right. Seldon, yes. I think that's now I don't need to do I need to take minutes for this rest of it or is are we covered now? <laughs> I don't think you need to. Okay. I will not, not be taking minutes for the joint meeting, just putting that out there. I did that. So what we can do is we can post this on the website. We post most of our recordings on the website. I might take some notes if they're relevant in these minutes, but I won't. Um, it won't be thoroughly documented for the combined meeting. Allison? Yes. If you just put a note down that discussed FY22 budget, and unless there's an, some vote that needs to be taken, you cover. <laughs> Yep. Welcome, welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting for February 8th, 2021 um, at uh, 5.03 p.m. Uh, meetings normally held at the main meeting room in the municipal offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television, um, and the remote, remote uh, meeting connections can be found if you go to the town website. Down on the bottom right, you'll see um, upcoming meetings. You click on that meeting. There'll be an agenda there. Uh, on that agenda is a Zoom link and also so telephone numbers. So if you're listening and you want to call in or watching on FCAT and want to call in and, and, and make a comment, the Phone number is 4312-626-6799. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And should you need the passcode, it is 570012. There's also a Zoom link, which is where most people are found us. Uh, you can click on that Zoom link and, and be here. So meeting attendees should mute their phones and uh, landlines, uh, you can star six will mute and unmute yourself. Um, so mute yourself unless you're asking questions. So we have less background noise. Um, and then all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. Welcome to the joint meeting of the, let's see, the select board, board of health and the capital improvement finance committee and the finance committee. And I think maybe capital finance would want to call their meeting to order too. Right. I no. So I'm going to call to order the Capital Improvement Planning Committee for February 8th at 5.05. Great. Thank you, Jack. Tommy, oh, and uh, 
Uh, you're welcome, Carolyn, and uh, welcome back, Jeff. <laughs> well, thank you. We'll see how this works. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. What so, do we want to do first? So I, I was hoping to hear, um, so really, I, I thank you all for coming together. I, it's been a way too long since we could have all gotten, um, I wish we could all be in the same room seeing each other, but here we are still. Um, partway through February 2021 and we're still separated but we have kind of learned how to <laughs> make things work somewhat um, so we're all here today to talk about capital and budgets right we're all putting our budgets together for um, FY22 and I was talking with um, I know Brenda's been working on building the books and I was talking with Barb the other day uh, Barbara Hancock um, our uh, clerk and treasurer and tax collector and and she said what are we doing with some of these debts coming up so we've got um we've got a few large debts that we have you know uh, town on land we have the school roof sewer projects coming forward so we wanted to kind of figure out one some of those issues what we want to do with with those um loans that we have right now and loans that are coming up and just to make people aware of what we're doing and then um and then we also have a, you know, a, I know Casey has been working hard on, uh, and, and all other members have been working hard of kind of looking at our 22 capital projects request plan, which is fairly hefty. And so we have to wade through that and see, you know, what can happen this year, what can't happen. Um, would like to hear from Brenda kind of what the, what the revenues are looking like for the year, just kind of a, a check in of everybody and where we're at. Um, and uh, so I think um, I, I told Barb that we could go the debts first and get her out of here. <laughs> so she didn't have to hang out so long. Um, so if Barb, if you want to unmute, we could, um, yeah. unless anybody else has a, another plan in mind, we could, we could hear the debts and, and kind of deal with that first. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah, so welcome. Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> a lot of you I haven't seen in so long. I know. Um, <laughs> so um, I, I was talking to Trevor earlier in a, yeah, in a couple and I just kind of said a couple of our loans are um, no brainers so far. We've been doing $100,000 towards the roof, the school roof every year, plus whatever we get for donations. Um, so I'm not, I'm not concerned about that, but I was just wondering what the plan for the um, natural New England natural bakers property. We mm -hmm. had um, financed that short term because we were so hopeful that it was going to turn over quick. Um, but that's going to be coming up soon. Actually, all all of the loans are coming up soon. A couple in April, the land and the roof, and then the wastewater and the clarifier in June. So, um, did we want to just uh, was the plan to just refinance the whole New England natural baker property? Uh, continue with 100,000 on the school plus whatever donations we get. Um, and then I'll just throw all my questions out there. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Do you, well, could I ask, do you know how much is left on the school roof at the moment? Uh, I, I do, I do. Actually, Brenda, do you have that right there? I think I have it in my mind. Uh, the um, 426 four, is 431 is or something. Pardon? 426, somewhere in that range. Okay. 486, something like that is, is yeah. the... Um, yeah. um, Casey, what's the timeline on getting um, the RFP out for the Natural Bakers property? The issue with the Natural Bakers property is real estate has dropped in the last year since COVID dramatically. Um, yeah. I had a conference call with uh, Andrea Woods, the procurement officer up the COG, because she did a property sale for Heath several months ago. And that's a sticking point. We weren't going to do an appraisal, but I think at this point we have to, because we need to know what property values look like. It may not be what we like. And unfortunately that's, that's a function of the market, mm -hmm. not of what we want. Right. And I, I know we at yeah, all- but What's the timeline on that? I'm, I'm, we have to I mean... get the appraisal. I haven't gotten somebody to get back to me about the appraisal. I know, but it's another few months. We've had this for a year in September. And I this is driving me crazy. They can't put it on the market. Why don't we put it out as an RFP 
and get the and then we can see the what the appraisal is too. We might get more than we thought. See. Generally, you reference a value. You have to reference a value for the property in the RFP RF request for proposal. So, so we either pick the assessed value or we get an appraisal. Mm -hmm. And so I'll throw that out to so, the select board and they can consider it. And maybe we can come have a conversation about it on Wednesday. Well, I, I kind of, I understand the, the, I share the frustration. It's been multiple things going on with that property and just, and then COVID right in the middle of it has sucked all the energy out of the room for everything else. But um, the plan was that we were, you know, we got this land back, we were going to turn it around fast and we ended up having to do some, um, you know, had to bring it to town meeting and extend the road a little bit and do some other eas easement stuff, deal with the brook. So we did all that. Everything's ready to go. And then the market kind of tanks. So I know I do recognize that commercial land right now is not uh, where it was a year ago. Um, so the question was, do we want to, obviously we're going to, we're going to um, go for another year, probably, I would recommend um, that we turn that loan over for another year. I do think it's important to go out to out to um, for an RFP, to, but do we want to wait a couple months to see what the market does before it goes out and in the meantime, get the evaluation? I, I don't know anybody else who has better re uh, real estate mm. mind than me. Um, it, it, would it make sense to just hold a little bit or what do you think, Carolyn, just take what you can get? Um, I just think it's. No, it's I, I'm not. I'm not saying do a trash sale, but right. I think it is important that we moving on this. Uh, using a, putting an RFP out on the assessed value seems to make sense. Okay. Okay. And John. Jeff David, Upton. Yeah. Uh, Jeff one, Upton. One second, Jeff. Uh, John had his hand up, and then I'll come right to you. Go yeah, ahead. I, okay. I, yeah, yeah, I'm Jack Davy. Oh, Jack. Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Um, I, you question: uh, Why can't why can't we ask more than the assessed value? Why can't we just use our heads and ask in general? In general, property in Deerfield sells for more than the assessed right. value. Can't we look at the assessed value and then add some that sounds reasonable? Mm. So what you can do is you can give it a, there's a term for it. You basically give it a bottom number. Any, you won't accept anything below a certain sure. number. So the board could do that. Um, I pulled the assessed value off the property record. I can't remember what it is right now, Jack. Um, I was gonna ask if you need it. And so what we could do is we could give it a flat, a value that you don't go below. Then if you don't get any bids, that's when you know you probably change tack yeah, on it or, but there are requirements to doing property sales in terms of time frame for rfp and they if andre if andrea told me right they just added a added a requirement in the law and so she and i had an email exchange about it and then vaccination stuff started so yeah. i've been working right. on some of that with some of my peers so i'll go back and check it though i'll write myself a note Jeff, you had a question too, or a comment? Well, a comment, Trevor, yes. Trevor, I, I have a tendency to agree with you. I know we'd like to move the property, but with, with uh, you know, the COVID environment right now, I, I don't think it's the best time to try to move this quickly. I agree with you. I'd rather sit on the property for a while. I mean, we've had it for this long. Right. I would rather sit on it for a while and wait to see us come out of this COVID situation because I think you're going to see an uptick in the market. And uh, I think I think as a town, we'd probably be better off holding it for a while and, and then uh, trying to get out of this COVID environment. And I think you would see uh, land values improve. That's just my thought. That's a, a good point. Yeah, well, yeah. But, but I it's going to be a problem. Um, I don't think there's going to be a problem with the values going up, but by the time we get the RFP written and out, we're talking summer. So the summer, it should be somewhat improved. That right. was my yes, hopefully it would be. Yes, I agree. <laughs> hopefully it will improve. And I also think, you know, uh, Deerfield is definitely going to be more attractive for commercial with Treehouse coming to town. And, and you know, we, we definitely... Um, 
Right. Up and up as far as I think that people do have an interest in Deerfield, but that that is drawing some some interest. So somebody else had their hand up recently. I just I, saw. Oh yes, Barb. <laughs> <laughs> I have the um, I have collections up in front of me, so it looks like the assessed value is two sixteen seven. Yeah. Does that sound right, TC? Yes, it does. Uh, okay, and our um, purchase price and the loan is three fifty eight seven eighty. Oh. It might make sense to wait a couple months. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. I think we could start drafting the RFP. Yeah, I have an example of the last one. <clears throat> Andrea so sent me that. Is the um, is the, Oh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, I I would agree with with Jeff on this one. I don't care if that property sits there for the next year. Quite honestly. Yeah. Uh, it's it's been what pretty close to twenty years now that we've owned it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. <laughs> What's another year? Yeah. Yeah. So is the is the consent so, from finance committee um, and select board to have have us um, again uh, flip that loan over? I, I think the rates are pretty good right now, so yeah. for a year on that property. Do we actually have a loan on that per se, yes. or is it just a yes. yes. okay? Yes. Yeah. I don't know what the rate is right now. I know it was a short term because we were hoping to just kind of turn it around pretty quick, but I don't know right. what what a longer term is going to look like what the market looks like right now yeah uh we got a we have a current current rate on it of, of 1.19 but yeah yep. cheap. um and it's not going higher no significantly no. Right. okay okay so uh, so refi for a year Yep, and now the school roof um, makes sense, I guess, to do the same plan we've been marching along, yeah. one hundred thousand and and whatever yeah. gift we get. Okay. And so initially, when we were talking about the clarifier at the at the onset, that million dollars, which ended up being seven hundred, I think, in something. Yep. Um, I think the sense was that we were going to pay it off with with the. Um, Enterprise the loan. revenue that we had on on hand, but yeah. I don't know if that's the case. So my my question, I guess, for Brenda and others is, and maybe Dave uh, had to reach out uh, or USDA. There there was some number that we had to keep in reserve while we were going through the USDA process um, that we needed to have in our enterprise fund okay. reserves. So I don't know how those numbers shake out. I am on the. I do think we need to pay that off because we have a massive you know debt coming. Right. And uh, be nice to have that one out of the way, but I don't know if it's going to take two years or if there's another source of money we would use in the meantime. So, I have heard back from uh, James Rivers at uh, DPC. Okay. And he said that USDA isn't specifying a minimum that we have to keep, but he said the general rule of thumb is to keep one year's operating expenses in retained earnings. Mm -hmm. And he suggested that we keep another 25%. Makes it kind of tough to use any retained earnings for the payoff. But um, I did do a little bit of playing with numbers today. Um, if we used, let's say, 300000 of uh, what we need to pay that debt off um, out of retained earnings and the rest of it out of the operating budget, um, that brings us down to about a million twenty four thousand in retained earnings, which you know will be replaced when we get yeah. get it recertified. So you've got a couple months lag in there. Right. Um, but it raises our operating budget about twenty five percent. I don't know how that figures with with the the rate increase that you were expecting to put into place for this uh, this next mm -hmm. month. So. Um, I don't know what to what to tell you there, but that's. I don't, I don't think we can. I can't. I don't think we can absorb that kind of um, increase because of the sludge hauling right. increases. The sludge haul is going way up, even more than mm -hmm. we need at town meeting. And that has been budgeted. Kevin has put that into his budget, and so that's taking that into account. So, if we took two years to pay off the clarifier instead of one, is that? Would that, is that a little better? Well, certainly it would look better for, um, for purposes of spreading it out, but what are we gonna have to start paying for 
the big project. Well, I and think it's really interesting just, for a little while. Oh yeah, go ahead, Barb. Well, I was just wondering, so um, the town is gonna pay the 25% and the rest are coming out of the reserved earnings from the sewer. So do you, um, do you, do they have to travel together? Can, I guess, does the town want to pay its 25% this year and get that done with, and then mm -hmm. gradually um, pay out of sewer reserves as it's comfortable or, or, or available? Or are we going to make two, you That's know, true. break it in half yeah. and we pay half of our 25% and they pay right. half of their, how did you want to do it? Um, hmm. That's a good idea, Barbara. Yeah. Um, just if to we pay can... our, our portion off because it's a smaller portion, obviously. Um, and it's a budget portion, um, whereas the other is out of the earnings. So right. they might um, have different uh, decisions, you know, your budget versus your retained earnings. So, I mean, that um, we don't have to do that till June. I don't have to know till June right. <laughs> on that. But as far as your budget. Yeah. I so just, Barbara, when you were talking, you said something about getting recertified in a couple of months. So that will be before yeah. June. So would we have yeah. potentially more funding available yeah. before yeah. June? Well, right now? Fiscal year end is June 30th, obviously. So um, by the time I get free cash certified and retain earnings recertified, so usually about the end of August, beginning of September. Okay. Um, I mean, I don't really have a, I mean, Skip want to weigh in at all, a thoughts on this? I just, um, my worry is to, I do want to get, you know, certainly get it paid off fairly quick, but I don't know if it's able to happen all in one shot. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the only thing that I would throw in is that I, if I had all of the figures for all of the, the projects, particularly the wastewater treatment plant type operations, mm -hmm in front of me, maybe I could, you know, yeah, think of something to say that made sense, but since I don't have that information, right, it's tough to, I would like to look at it. Yeah, maybe we just put this, I mean, I guess we're, everyone's aware of it yeah. now. We, we, yeah. We're not up against the clock. We could think about this as we're going through the operating budgets and see how it shakes out as we finish out our budget and decide really towards the end what we want to do. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That. Okay. Yes. Just so you're all aware, we did spend uh, 754000 for the clarifier. Okay, thank you. So, so we're looking at a loan of $554,000 um, at the end of this fiscal year. So the question is, is um, do we pay all of that off in fiscal 23? So it ends up being about 138000 in principle for the for the general fund and I can't remember how much for the wastewater treatment plant but the difference is is theirs. Okay. And then um, okay so then the next um, I guess the next item is really um, so just kind of fill everybody in on the we're still not completely filled in but what I know of on the large um, phase one of this wastewater treatment plant project. Um, Wednesday night, we will have a select board meeting and we will hear from uh, D, um, David Prickett and his, and his crew. Um, we have, they've done the evaluations for the bid. So the equipment, we went out to bid for equipment a lot like we did with the clarifier where we bid the actual item itself separately and then had that rolled into the, you know, so that the contractors would carry that number. And we did that with, um, I think it was four, four items or so um, that, we, that we did that with uh, on this project. And then uh, we also created six alternates because what they were learning when they went out to bid for the project in orange was that they grouped it all together and it left, um, no one any it didn't leave any wiggle room for the project so they um they got a number much higher than they expected so they were kind of stuck so we thought well why don't we we know that we have a second phase coming up so why don't we just structure the bid so that we have multiple levels that we could pull out like the um 
the UV uh, project and, and um, instead of the chlorine, you know, things that could kind of push off a little bit. So they, they we're going to stagger mm -hmm. that bit a little bit. Um, that, so we'll hear Wednesday night on that. There's a meeting with the core group, uh, Skip and uh, Julie are, are involved with that along with Kevin and others. So we'll meet Friday uh, at 10 to kind of just have a look at that bid and, and the schedule and do we have everything ready for USDA? The plan is to go out to bid on the 16th of, of this month, the day after President's uh, Day. And, um, and then we would have bids back at the end of March. And then hopefully we would be ready to hit the ground running during the building uh, season. So um, that's as if everything kind of falls in place the way we want it to. So that, um, that's kind of a quick overview of what's going on with that bid. And that bid is again, about $11.4 million for that project. We would only be looking at um, interest at the moment. Is that right, um, everybody? Yeah. yeah. So uh, for next year's budget, we're looking at interest. I don't know if I have that figure exactly right. Maybe somebody else has it. Um, well, we are, um, we are going to be refinancing at the end of June. So right. last time we took out, um, we stayed under a, uh, stayed under a million yeah. Uh, so we didn't really have a uh, bond council expense. Uh, once we go over a million, we will. Uh, yeah. And so the two, the clarifier and the wastewater uh, loan together was 1.768 and change. And it was about 16, 16, five for interest. So we'll be paying that interest this June. Yep. And so the, the big, you know, million dollar question is how much do we take out for the next year? Originally, um, we thought we would be expending uh, a large portion of the project uh, to the tune of seven, almost seven five, seven point right. five. So I just don't know if I proceed with that um, with that schedule that we kind of specked out um, last year. I don't know if anybody has, you know, yeah. everybody who saw it. It looks like this. Um, so I'm still operating on that. Yeah, this was a ca kind of an estimated uh, project cash flow that um, yeah. DPC put out for us to kind of help us understand, you know, what we we're paying for right. um, at, at what times, you know, and it started in May of 2020 and it ends in uh, March of 2023 with the completion of you know, the project. So, right. um, and, and the first part is a lot of the engineering is up front and then um, and legal and bond council, you know, uh, fees, engineering services, and, and then and, and then in June of this year, 2021, we'll have uh, construction, you know, contract costs, about 700,000 a month. Um, that'll go for a little while and then drop down a little bit. They, they fluctuate up and down each month, along with the other other fees. Um, I can yeah. get people that information if you don't have it. You know, we can send that along, Barbara. It would be really, really nice if DPC would update that for us. Okay, sure. Yeah. Trevor? Trevor, yeah. I have a question. Yep. Jeff Upton, question. Okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, with, with the uh, project here, and obviously I know there's different stages going, but I do, I do want to ask a question. I'm not trying to light any fires or anything, but is there any plan of, of a holding tank where the septic users can uh, dispose of their waste from their septic tanks and incorporate that into this project? I, be I believe if I remember right, that was, um, we, we are going to look at that and, and, uh, and, and that was gonna be in phase two and not phase one of the project. But yes, I know that we asked about that and there is quite a bit of um, expense that goes along with doing that. But, but I know that it was something that we wanted to give, show that to the, to the residents and said, here, this is what it'll cost to do. This is the savings to the people who would use it. Um, and find out you know, where that shakes out is everybody. I, I was intent on making sure that that happened. I don't want to lose track right. of you for bringing that up. Right. Again. Yeah. Okay, Trevor. Th thank you. I appreciate that. And the reason why I'm asking is because I just had my septic tank uh, pumped. I just had my septic tank pumped uh, late fall here. 
Yep. And what all the companies are running into, they're running into a problem that they're only allotted X amount of gallons to dispose themselves. Yeah. So my, my septic tank cost me $525 to have pumped. But okay. the biggest thing, the biggest charge was it was $300 for the disposal. So it yeah. broke down 225 to have it pumped, but $300 to have it, you know, disposed mm -hmm. of. And, yeah. and so I know the town's up against the wall as far as where, where we get rid of this stuff, as yeah. far as the waste. But yeah. the individual homeowners are starting to see huge increases also as far as uh, disposals. You're so, right. and, you know, so that's, I don't see that disappearing. Uh, very quickly, I see that's going to be continue a, a real problem down the road in you know the next few years here because yeah. even 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 the companies they're going to run into a situation where their allotments are going to be really cut and they're just going to have to charge outrageous prices for the disposal. So yeah. I I would hate to see everybody, including the town, run into a real terrible situation here where there's no place to go. I know it is. It is a problem. And, and I know there's a, there's a seminar again coming up with uh, Joe Comerford. Natalie is, is holding one all about wastewater and stuff. And we'll definitely bring that up again there and see what, what they're working on for areas. You're right. You have to travel so far to get rid of this stuff. And we have to, even just our sludge, we had not regular septic, but just our sludge that comes out of our facility. Exactly. We have to go all the way to Lowell. Um, and, and we got a price, you know, earlier in the year. And then we got another almost double price just, just again, the other month, uh, last month or so it's, um, it's, it's out of control, the amount of cost it is, and there's nowhere to bring it. Um, but yeah, so we have to decide, you know, as a town, you know, we could, we could take it in from many other areas if we could handle that once we get, you know, and that's a few years out because you'll need, you know, this, this phase to get done in 2023 and then the next phase to get done. I don't know if it's 2025, but so it's a ways out, but it's still, if we could work it in and, and make it a, a revenue generator, you know, that would be good as well. Um, that, yeah, well, I just, I, I just don't, I just don't want it to be forgotten. I, I really think it's a, a issue of really a worthwhile discussion. Yep. Thank you. But Jeff. Thank you. Yep. I appreciate it. Sure. Yeah. Trevor, skip, skip. skip. Can I join in for a second here? Uh, Carolyn, did you? I just want to say that we, it, we were looking at this as a revenue generator, and so it was not forgotten. Yep. It not only is a service to our townspeople, but as Trevor says, there is it, it would be also a revenue revenue generator for other you know other areas so we certainly were going to be able to if we were going to do it we were going to be capable to make uh, hopefully have some payback okay well thank you i appreciate that uh, skip yeah i just wanted to get back on the the interest expense question that came up. Typically yeah. with, at least my understanding, is that typically with projects, whether it's this one that we're talking about or the construction of the schools, that revenue, I mean, the interest on debt as we're going along is just a number that gets plugged into the total cost of the project. So whatever, the, whatever you have to borrow, Mm -hmm. Whatever the interest during that period, it's just part of the expense yep. of the project. At least that's my understanding. I could be wrong. No, you're right. I think you're right on that. And um, the interest still has to be accounted for in the general fund and in the mm -hmm. wastewater treatment plant budgets. You can't roll that into the capital project. Okay. Yeah. So how much... Um, do, do we have a figure of how much we would need for the next? Um, I mean, is that what you're looking for is to kind of fig, plug in a number for next well, year? Well, I mean, the 1.7 cost us 16.5. Right. And so multiply that times seven, right? Right. <laughs> or five, at least, you know, at least. If we've, <laughs> yeah. 
it'll so, be a lot. <laughs> and we'll need we'll need that in kind of two spots. Is that right? One in the general fund and one in the reserve, uh, one in the uh, enterprise fund. Yes. Okay. So if you if and in in the calculations I did earlier, I did plug that into the wastewater treatment plant budget. Okay, great. So as long as that's accounted for, and then we. Right. We can count. And I just wanted to maybe clarify, um, Brenda, our bond council um, expenses can be rolled into the to the project, correct? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. okay. So we can separate those items. All right. Great. Yeah. That sounds good. Well, yeah. I mean, if 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 you've already got that in the rep in the enterprise fund, and do we do we have it figured somewhere in our budget under um, under interest on maturing debt? I have not plugged that portion of it in. I was more interested in seeing what effect it would have on retained earnings and wastewater treatment first. Okay. We um, wanted to talk to you guys first as we go yes. to finish these budgets up. <laughs> sure. Yeah. sure. Um, so any, anything else on debt at the moment, or do you, do you feel like you have what you need for information, uh, Barb and Brenda, or do you, I mean, I know we're going to talk about the land or was it the land? I right. can't remember. Yeah. The, the larger the land and how you want to proceed with the clarifier. Yeah. The clarifier. And, Thank you. Yep. We'll, and we'll then how the, um, timeline from Dave Prickett, if yeah. that's changing and if that makes us um, you know, reevaluate how much we planned on taking out for the next okay. year. So at the end of June, I was going to take out another loan based on what we thought we were going to spend yep. for the next year. Yep. Um, and at the time, based on that timetable, it was 7.5 million. We were right. going to. So, we'll, yeah, we'll, so. so when we have a, Carol, when we, when we meet with Dave on, on uh, Wednesday night, we can just uh, have, or I can, we can call beforehand, but maybe you can have that information for us to make sure that this is up to date. Yeah. My main concern again, Trevor, is just that everything be split off and divided. So yeah. in case there's the infrastructure um, or grant program that even a piece can. So um, just so everyone knows, uh, Carolyn's <laughs> internet is really bad. So she cuts out. It's very, very she does. slow speaking. And so uh, I just want to let everybody know that that's just um, internet connection. Um, but you rest. Yes, absolutely. We will. Um... Yeah, I'm sorry. My internet is terrible. No, no, it's okay. It happens everywhere these days. Um, so yes, that um, we do definitely. I mean, I think we'll talk about that coming up in, in a, a little bit of the capital project too, that, and the MVP stuff that we always want to pull some portion of this project or have it ready. If there is an infrastructure project that comes out now that we have a different administration, we don't know what, what might come out, but we're ready uh, to move. And that's also why we want to get moving on engineering for phase two, so that that um, can be tackled if anything comes down the road as well. Um, okay, um, any other questions on the, on the debt items at all? I've got just one question, if yeah. you don't mind. This is, I guess, for Brenda. Uh, there is someplace a maximum amount of debt that uh, that the town can carry. Mm -hmm. right. Could you could you come up with that figure for us so that we have it? It's not a, not right now, but in the future. Well, it, I'll just give you a quick round figure. It's about sure. thirty million. Thirty what? Thirty five million. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so then, uh, next item would be really kind of talking about the capital projects. I, and th this is a massive list and we'll take a little bit of time. So Barb, thank you. Um, okay. Thank you. Very much. I don't know if anyone else needs to peel off, but, um, I don't know who wants to tackle this. Casey, do you want to just kind of say what, you know, what you've been working on for the, you know, there's, there's highlighted stuff on here. This has been a bit of a catch all, right? We're just kind of throwing things here. Like this is what we've talked about but we really want to see what everybody feels like. I mean, this list is it's huge. So. so I took last year's list and I sort of organized some of the things under areas where they um, grant projects, um, municipal offices versus the police department because they have separate needs. Mm -hmm. um, senior center. There are several projects that are related to the senior center or senior services. So I sort of organized that. Anything that's highlighted is new. 
any, I, I, and I worked with Brenda very extensively to help me try to catch as much as I could in terms of mistakes. But I started with last year's list and tried to reflect what was discussed. Now, some of these projects, I don't have any recollection of, like I don't have, even have any documentation. So I did the best I could to reflect what had already been in the plan. And there are changes to the plan um, that reflect changes from, for instance, the school. They pushed a couple things off or chose not to request them. Um, they had some changes in the cost for their projects. And they are only addressing, I think, the most needed things mm -hmm. based on what my conversations with Darius were. And in the packet, I actually reflect an email with him so that everybody understands where he's coming from. Because I asked some clarifying questions. I was a little confused. And so I worked with Brenda, tried to, tried to sort of give it a, a framework, but I noticed in the last year's, the, the last capital budget spreadsheet that full costs for projects had been reflected. For instance, the $8 million for the library. So the reason you see what you see for wastewater is that is the full cost of the project um, as we have it estimated now. In other words, the 11 point something yeah, million. Yep. So I put that all in there. We're not borrowing that much. Phase one is only eight, but that also reflects. And so this is, this is a clarifying question. I need everybody to direct me on or make changes. Um, we're borrowing 8 million ish. We have the opportunity for a 2.4, I think Trevor million dollar grant, but because it wasn't split in the other big project that was on the schedule, I just left it as is with the total. Mm -hmm. um, and so there were a couple of projects, smaller projects that the board had asked me to put in. Um, there are some questions about senior stuff because there's a senior needs element, which is senior services versus the center itself. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll shut up and you guys can dig in. So I could, I mean, if you want, I could just start at the top and we could just go down the list and, oh, go ahead, Jack, or your well, chair of the committee. So I, go down the list. I, uh, so Casey, are you saying that these nine, I, I count 19 requests and I've never, in, in my years on the CIPC, I've never seen 19 requests before. And to be honest with you, I feel overwhelmed by it. Yeah. And are you saying that these 19 requests are not necessarily requests? Tia's uh, request in that packet was what I got. What, what's that? Uh, say again? What you see in your packet, each request is what I received. From, or what or, clarifies the prior head, project the select board or yeah is it possible that there are more requests this year because um because there's a system in place that everybody's understanding now about how to make these requests is that possible. part of it that's a very good comment it's that's a very it's insightful possible. insightful allison because yeah, it's good it's that possible. i'm glad that they are requested and they are you know in writing and hopefully this is a big portion of what actually will be needed by also, well, also, really, being... people have been trying people have been trying so hard not to send in requests mid-year yeah and and also i think this is we also really just kind of we've been asking to say okay let's throw it all on the table what are we looking at here what are all the different projects people want to do so we could look at this list and go well this isn't happening in one year what are we shifting off? What are the needs? As, as Jeff always says, what are the wants and what are the needs? And yes. let's, you know, the, the idea is to go through this together and go, go ahead, Jack. Well, but, but the, you know, the CIPC is charged with, um, uh, with, with, with making a recommendation on uh, the, uh, on whether a particular project is beneficial to the town um, and, and even, if, if you read the bylaws, we're, we're supposed to consider the financial health of the town, which is which has always been difficult for us. Um, but you know, when when you you give us nineteen uh, 
um, requests, you know, things, uh, you know, things like a, a wooden cake for the 350 and, um, you know, $35,000 for uh, building inspector electronics archiving. Um, what else do we got here? 91,000 for a senior center roof, which I don't understand because we don't really know what we're doing with that building anyway. Right. Um, do, you, do you, do we, do you guys really want us to dig into no. whether the senior center needs a roof or not? No. I, I think what, what I was hoping that, well, my thought was now that this is all here and we're together, we'd go down the list and maybe we could hash this stuff out and say, do we really expect CIPC to go through each one of these? We've learned like, we've learned we had somebody come and look at the roof. It was, it was told to us in the report that it needs a roof. So let's get it on the schedule. And then, uh, cause we were afraid, okay, well, if we're going to save the building, we should start with the roof, but it turns out the roof isn't so bad, at least from what we've had one guy look at it, one slate guy look at it, but we have, we have meetings coming up that, that Julie is, is, you know, hosting and, and we'll hear a lot more soon, but I think we just wanted to catch that stuff and maybe you shouldn't be digging through all this yet. Casey, you have your hand up. So my suggestion, Jack, and, and really Ali's comment is very, is very discerning. This is a, this is a throw it on the table. These are the things that we think need to be addressed in the next several years. How they get addressed in terms of a timeline is a process. Um, the board identified the fact that we do have to deal with sidewalks and that's been a need for a while. Now you have an estimate. The estimate will change depending on how long it takes to decide where you wanna start. But you have an estimate, you have a firm number. Um, the senior center roof. So through the process and Julie is gonna host, the town building advisory committee is hosting a set of two, uh, two meetings to discuss senior needs, the senior center. Um, but we're also through the work that Chief Pachurik has been doing on that committee, we're going to pursue some grant opportunities to develop a senior needs survey so that you can start a process. These are identified needs, but that doesn't mean you get them done all at once. It means you start a progression of observing what, what, is, what it looks like in terms of buildings versus equipment versus um, shorter term, but expensive more than 10, 000, at 10,000 or more um, items that are coming up closer than five years. Kevin? Jeff Upton, may I make a comment? Yes, uh, Kevin, I'm gonna to go to Kevin first. He had his hand up and then I'll come right to you, Jeff. Go ahead, Kevin. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the, the only thing I just wanted to come up with as far as this for Jack is, is you know, I don't think when when CIPC was asking for, for the outlay or, or, you know, the five-year um, outlay, what they think you're gonna do. Um, not everybody was quite as, as ready as we were with highway and gave you that 28 year plan. Um, again, that was an easy plan for us to do, <laughs> excuse me, but I think everybody's just starting to get on the bandwagon of recognizing, hey, you know, this is, this is how the process works. And again, you know, this isn't saying that every single solitary thing that is here is going to be funded by any means, but. Well, you know, so, so what I'm, not, not, I understand what you're saying, Kevin. And so, so what I'm hearing is that these 19 requests, some of them are requests for this fiscal year and some of them are, go on the five-year plan. Yeah. Yes. But how do we, how does our committee determine which ones are I think this year and which are on the plan? And that's what I was hoping to do at this meeting a bit is to kind of get people's feelers and go, OK, these are the things that spit out once we finally got a chance to look at this and go, can we get by? You know, is there, do we really need this or, or, you know, kind of just have a quick conversation. Nobody's wed to anything. There are some things that are kind of important we have to do, but um, you know, in, in this coming year, but we could kind of just get those feelings. Sure. Um, I think so, it's a scheduling I, staggering that we need to consider. Yes, you you would have yeah. I, yeah, you have to understand. You have, you have to understand that this, that we have to prioritize. You can't do everything all the time, but, you know, is it, is it crisis? 
We're gonna we're gonna uh, put on the capital plan. I'm gonna put it in the chat box for the uh, for <laughs> Carolyn <laughs> Carolyn's house. Yeah, we need to call Comcast and look into the internet service on Upper Road. Absolutely. I know. It, let me tell you, it's really awful. I, <laughs> I Jeff, Jeff, Jeff had a question, and I, I told him I'd come back to him after Kevin. So go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, actually, uh, a comment. I, I unfortunately I have not seen the uh, 19 requests yet. Uh, maybe somebody could send me. Uh, uh, you know, an RFP with, with the request so I could take a look at them. But um, also, I guess my You're concern is with, with, with 19 requests, Jack, maybe I have to reconsider my position on that <laughs> CIPC. <laughs> well, we'll but, that one for you. But, no, uh, right. You're on it. <laughs> right. But uh, on, a, on a serious note, I, I think, uh, as Trevor said, maybe this is I, I don't think we need to commit right now. I think we can discuss this a little bit, go down through, because I think there's a lot of things from what I'm hearing that could be uh, open for a lot of discussion. And one is a building committee in the senior center. Uh, from what I read of the report from, from the uh, assessment of that building is that it sounded like that building needed to come down. Nice. So, you know, before we start talking about, you know, fixing roof and so on and so forth, I think Julie's committee, you know, the building committee, select board, and maybe a few other people uh, need to really take a look at that because, once again, we know we're, we're limited here as far as funds. So, once again, let's try to spend our money wisely and I'm not saying you've got to spend money to run the town, but let's just be smart about it. And uh, Carolyn is right. We're going to have to prioritize. And Jack's right. You know, you, 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 uh, you know you're not going to be able to address everything in one year. Obviously, it's going to have to be spread out. And that's something that I think we're going to all have to work through. I, I would just hate to start making quick decisions here and commitments right. until until we review everything and really get a good handle on it. You know, even even to the point of even discussing a roof right now for the senior center, uh, I think is off base at this time. Mm -hmm. I, I think we need to look at the building itself and make a decision on what really needs to be done. Because as I said, I went through those studies of the town buildings and that was an eye opener. There's some, there's some serious discussion there. There is, so. and, I think, and we'll get that over the next two Saturdays um, with, the, with the groups and, and their presentations too. And I, I, I thought I had that impression too, Jeff. And then I was told that maybe that building was savable. But so, so we'll hash all that out and think about that. I just thought tonight, if we could just, if, I'd be happy to read these. I could just go through them fairly quickly, give any knowledge I have. Go ahead, Casey. What, I just want to let to... Jeff. Wait. Oh, oh, sorry, I want to make sure Allison gets to say something. What? Uh, hang on one sec. Um, so John, hand up hand up. Yeah, let me go to John first. I'll go back to Casey. And uh, this is, yep, go ahead, John, quick. For point of clarification, Casey, I think you said that the ones in yellow are new. Yes. Um, but I think I see some that are ongoing projects that you have. That I did the best I could to capture the ongoing projects from the that were referenced in the FY21. I, I think Allison wants to say something, Trevor. Allison. Yeah, I just wanted to throw it out there. I, this is just, you know, I've, I've been on this committee, the finance committee for a couple of years now and CIPC before that. And actually these 19 requests, well, it feels maybe a little chaotic this year. It to me feels like a lot of progress. Um, I'm, I, it, it, just for some perspective, it feels like an opportunity. You know, we were just talking about these debts and how do we want to manage them over the next few years? How much do we want to, you know, pay off immediately versus over time? And you know, looking especially at like the items like the sidewalks um, and thinking about how we're going to plan for that. I just want to say this is the first time on these committees I've had the sense that we're getting actually a big picture view that we can really plan around. Mm -hmm. um, it may not 
perfectly come to fruition this year, but just with the, with the context of the last few years, it does feel like progress and we're starting to kind of zoom out and get a, yeah. a broader view that we can plan around. And I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for that. Thank you. Um, I'll just say uh, just anecdotally that, that we, um, you know, I, I, I've had a problem a bit with um, multiple projects and how they kind of fit into a master plan that's kind of non-existent. So, um, I mean, we have ideas, we all have ideas of what we want to do, but there really is no, um, you know, our master plan is out to date and that's kind of a large town master plan, but I'm, like, I'm talking like a blueprint of, um, you know, the common, our parks, um, the, the, this building, the paving around it, how the police come in and out, the trees, the sidewalks, the complete street work, the parking lot, the Leary lot, um, all those different, the MVP programs, so I, I invited um, Jeff Squire is, is an architect and designer for um, with Berkshire Design. They're working on the, the common. And I asked him to just do a walk around town with me the other week, just to kind of just say, hey, these are the ideas that I've heard from multiple different people. Just so you have an idea, we want to, we would like to have some sort of large blueprint that we could say when we got a grant for MVP or a complete street that we had a consistent vision on what things would look like, what materials we would use, and how we would plug those in. And sometimes they wouldn't work. And as Allison said, you wouldn't always get it all flushed out right, but we'd have a better plan for how we want to tackle the larger products and what, are, what does our town really want to look like in, you know, five or 10 years out after we get some of these projects done. So he did send a proposal today I sent on to Casey and, you know, I haven't even looked at it yet, but there's an idea of kind of getting more of a holistic idea of what, what we're really all looking at and how these projects fit into it. I just wanted to kind of drop that little note that we're, we're trying to think big picture and how do we, how do we fit all this in? And then we can just kind of jump down this list and kind of say where we are at with these and what we know since we put them on the list or we should push them out a few years um, or there's other grants that are going to eat it up. Um, I could do that work and, and just kind of go through that if you want or if there's other discussion to have beforehand. You want me to go through the list? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's just start at the top real quick. Um, so there's, um, these are two new items under the 350th celebration. We're planning to get together in, on, in 2023 to celebrate um, Deerfield's 350th. Um, there is a cake, just a big plywood cake in Hatfield right now. I think it was in another town before that. It was supposed to go to Waitley. Um, I don't think it is going to go to Waitley. It may come here instead. This is just something that has been put together and it was a neat idea. People raised money and I think they bought a candle for it. Carolyn would have more information, but this is just, uh, um, it's going to need some rehab when it gets here. So this was a dollar figure. I think Carolyn uh, threw at it to say, hey, we're going to need this. We're also going to need some sort of display case for all the things that you know people will bring and display throughout the year of our 350th. So those are new items that I think probably came out of the 350th planning committees um, about, hey, do we want to do these? This is ideas. Um, so that, that's why those are here. And we can talk, you know, more in depth about those later. I just, again, I'm just going to hit these quicker. We'll be here all night. Um, um, can I just add, Trevor, the reason why they're here with the 10,000 figure is because it's close. And I don't want to be spending 10,500 and then get criticized. Yep. So yep. no, they're there for people to look they're at. They're just yeah. estimates. They actually might be under and we're ho fully hoping to um, raise money to cover the expenses, but they right. need to be there. Yes, we're definitely doing fundraising and all kinds of other things, but they're, they're an expense that's there to look at. Um, we always have our, you know, our, our, typically we try to put in money into our capital stabilization. So. Um, there's $250,000 there. Um, so that always gets moved around by the time we get down to, to town meeting. Um, the, oh, let me just get my glasses on. So there, there was, uh, you know, there was the generator that's been tabled from last year and it's really not on there. It looks like there's some anticipated stuff in 2025, but that really isn't anything to look at at the moment. We still have to grapple with, do we want a generator at the Deerfield Elementary School or not, <laughs> or, or finally kill that project altogether. Um, 
and then uh, restroom renovations and, and the capital, you know, Jeff can attest that they've been, uh, the, the elementary school has been putting, um, every year has been putting some money and, and doing a couple of bathrooms. And that's kind of like redoing the stalls that are, you know, rusting and putting in, you know, uh, like a PVC stall system and up, upgrading the bathrooms a bit. So they're going each wing at a time, a few at a time. So each year they're doing that. And they're also doing the flooring each year and pulling the carpets out and putting, um, you know, like a linoleum floor down for the kids. So it's much more, you know, sanitary and um, clean. So next year they're looking at, you know, for 2023, they're looking at replacing the backboards and gym equipment and, um, and some air conditioning for the skills and music room. So those are items that are coming up down the road, but don't have to happen right now. Um, and then, you know, back uh, years, a few years back, we looked at like, what is it going to cost to redo the kitchen? The, you know, they're going to need some stuff. It's 20, 25 years old. You know, we put 120 down a few years ago that maybe in 2024 we'll have this expenditure to redo some some of the large kitchen equipment. The uh, Chromebooks, I believe, were on there from last year, but I think have been paid for with a grant or through a school grant or something. So those are done. Um, the Frontier really this year is the, the, the what they're asking for is the gym and atrium duct cleaning and the atrium, uh, oh, excuse me, the auditorium uh, curtain replacement so it's an old you know for the for the shows and stuff the curtain is old and uh it may not be fire rated i know we ran into that in another building but um so that that's a figure that, that they're requesting the towns put some money towards um then we have grants uh so there's the complete streets program that has kind of had a bit of a back seat with covid it's just been crazy doing other stuff we haven't really been able to focus on it and again we don't really have a good master plan of where to begin do we start on elm do we start on a sidewalk somewhere so that's in progress but that's kind of a we've been funding that a little bit so we should talk about what we want to do with that and is that adequate the mvp uh grant matches there's they're kind of uh this is climate resiliency we've been doing a lot of projects as you can you know unfortunately it's taken so long but the the culvert at kelleher drive um we've done the the one up at the other end of town um, those have been good projects where the state has paid for engineering and uh and construction and we've had to pony up some money this one seems um this is a, a large figure and I, I want to dig into this a little bit more and understand. I think a lot of that is construction of the Leary lot, whether we do that as an MVP program with a, you know, a, a, a parking lot, like we were hoping to have paid for by a grant or we back off and do it as a different system. Anyways, that, that was something to discuss. And should we continue with that? There's other things involved in that MVP grant. Um, that's been a good win for the town and we should just look at do we want to continue that and and it's out there you know we're putting 200,000 a year we should put dedicated funds away to be able to pay for some of this stuff but the, but the the state split and the town split needs to be beneficial and I think I don't know about the Leary lot and is that worth it so we should look at that but it's, it is important to put some money aside seed money for these grants because um, it's really the only way you're getting grants nowadays although there is a new program that's out called one stop um, so I can talk about that later um, and then there's an MVP grant match which is um, we put a million dollars down this is really just um, can we get um, can we get a grant for the wastewater treatment uh, program to uh, make the sides you know more resilient to flooding different projects that we can do down there that would um, you know have some seed money again to get to get state or federal federal grant money. Um, I, I'm not sure where that million dollar came from. Carolyn probably could weigh in on that a little bit. Uh, or Casey, you got better. That right? million dollars is the estimate that DPC put together for a possible run at that high end amount through MVP Okay. Um, for the pipe and stuff, the fix right. on the pipe and stuff. That's actually more fitting through a MassWorks grant, yeah. but they're much harder to get. I know exactly, and, and it'd be tough to get an MVP grant of that size. But um, correct, they probably want to spread it around other other ways. But it, it, so that was just a discussion item. To talk it's about. a discussion item because I was asked to put it on there, and this gives people a framework of some of yeah. some of the grant projects that have been discussed. And we've also kind of in doing these sewer projects, we're realizing that there's other things that weren't in those initial evaluations, like the effluent pipe that goes from the plant out to the river. We we're hoping maybe that could be part of an MVP grant that really needs to get uh, replaced. Um, 
So, uh, and then we have the, um, the Oxford land that was not on there anymore, but there's the Cumberland Farms. What do we do with that? Do we want to, as a town, take that over, put a pocket park there? Do we want to steer clear of it completely and, uh, and get people to put some economic development in? It might be worth taking over. I mean, we'd like to push them to pull the tanks and you know, do something with that. But there was, there was some thought in tying that into our parks and um, other things that we're doing in town. So, that, so just a thought, how do, we, how do we take that eyesore out of the center of town? So that should be flushed out and talked about quite a bit. Um, so you're saying though that that's a placeholder? Yes, I, th I think so, yeah, yep. Jack, we can't move on it at the moment because um, they have to pull the tanks. And that's an economic, I mean, that's going to cost them money. Right. And of course, we have to we, do the environmental yep. right. you know, mitigation. Yeah. And so or anybody we're, buys. we're trying to pressure them um, to do something with the property. And, um, but we certainly would not take it yeah. um, under imminent domain unless there was a clean um, environmental you know, yep. 21 E on it. So it's, it's there as a placeholder, but it's because again, you don't know when they're going to agree with us and work with us, or they're going to dig in their heels. And so the, it was very important to put it out there that we're thinking of it. Yeah. Purely thinking. Yeah. I, Jeff Upton, yep. quick comment. Sure, go ahead. Uh, I, I agree wholeheartedly as far as I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole yeah. until they clean that up yes. because that could cost the town a ton of money. Oh, yeah. And also, also with it, I know there was some discussion earlier about turning it into a little pocket park in that, but mm -hmm. I, I don't see that as, as a very feasible thing to do if we're developing a big park right down the road. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that would, that's once again just not spending money wisely, especially if we're going to be able to uh, create the park that we're talking about, as I say, right down the road. Yep. Okay. So that was kind of just to get some discussion going on and trying to push push them to get moving. Go ahead, Casey. Um, this is for Jeff. Jeff, it's Casey. There is a packet with all this information in the foyer of the town hall for you. Yep. Okay, thank you. I will, I will uh, swing by and pick that up. I really appreciate that. Sure. So the municipal office is we had the town buildings assessment that was, you know, already has, has been happening. The town, there's the town common design and improvements. We've had some money kind of sitting there. We have spent some money on engineering. We just got some preliminary drawings from Berkshire Design. We have a meeting, I think, coming up on the 16th to kind of hear that out and, um, and put feedback back towards them to maybe redesign a little bit more or get some other ideas. Um, so that's kind of where that that's happening at the moment. And, and this would be more money to kind of start implementing some work if we could. Um, I don't know if that's the accurate number, but, but we had some number there for that. Um, so we should talk about that further. There's the town office file server. Uh, maybe Casey could hit on, I mean, it, it sounds like we need a server for town hall, but we should, I don't know. About that. That's so. actually a, a project that was early predates me. So we, um, what you have is a more updated number, though. I, I think it's going to be a little more expensive than that. Yeah. I just have been trying to set up a meeting with our IT specialists to get a better idea what, of what that looks like. Okay. And when that this happens. This is part of cybersecurity upgrade, too. So yes. this is not, a lot of pressure. I mean, this would be one of those more uh, a higher priority. Um, thing just because our for cyber security reasons as you know i don't want to say we're not fully protected but we got some problem we, we have also potential i i think just as a background a couple of comments folks cyber security has been on everybody's radar screen particularly in covid because there there's really been an uptick in hacking and it's been focused towards small towns and so the recommendation from the state and the federal government is to increase your cybersecurity so that you can protect yourself from hacks and ransomware because it's going to cost you money no matter how you how you deal with it. Yep. Um, this is the preventative measure or part of a preventative measure. Um, we do have some coverage through our insurance, but they are really pushing towns, the insurance companies, to put 
building blocks for better system response in place. So um, the town roof, um, that's been scratched out. I think um, all I know about that is that we're getting a ton of leaves and junk from these large trees that are here. Um, there's a thought about repaving our footprint here at Town Hall. And you know there, we have giant pin oaks that are right in the middle of the parking lot. Probably and 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 they threaten the cars and the employees. You know, when we get a windstorm, you know, you're it's risky parking your car there underneath those big things. So the plan is to kind of adjust those, uh, take them down where they need to come down, fix some that don't need to, you know, don't need to be there anymore, or fix the ones that can still stay, um, and then to kind of relook at the flow of traffic around the town hall. It's a dangerous corner back there with kids, you know, in the ballpark and you know, the police have to rush in and out of here. Uh, Chief is looking at a, a different entrance um, off of um, off of Al uh, Conway Street onto the, you know, kind of separate from the senior center in that area and just have a dedicated in and out from his, uh, his vantage point. So, um, so we're looking at paving and looking at that issue. Uh, there's also municipal office repairs. Um, you know, we, we haven't really spent any much money on this building at all. The, you know, the front of the building really needs some paint. The inspection side is, was, was supposed to be a temporary add on that thing's rotten off the side of the building over assessors. there. Yeah. The assessors, I'm sorry, the assessors that, that needs some work. Um, so, and then there's building, you know, inspections, permitting software. We started talking about, you know, making it easier for our residents and people coming to do business in our town to, to be able to catch up with the, you know, technology and be able to pull permits online and track them online, all that stuff. We have not stepped their foot into that yet, but need to. Casey, go ahead. Two things, the roof project, the reason the roof project in it, in air quotes here, the reason the roof project is crossed out is because GRLA, when they did the surveys of the buildings, identified a lot of other issues that need to be dealt with in terms of maintenance. So what I did was I combined some of that and you'll find that there is a matrix in your packet that shows what they identified and estimated costs, just like with the senior center roof. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the permitting software, this is actually the best win to assist people right now for, for the lowest amount of money. Um, and, it, and the recommendation is out there because COVID has, has interrupted our entire ability to do business. An inspection software could make it a lot more effective for us to keep construction going. That's one of the few industries that's really moving and is busy. And this $15,000, we could, we could look for grants and that's, that's been discussed. It's just, we're waiting to see what falls out um, from some of the grant funds that we have and some of the upcoming grant funds that could be utilized. So it's in there so that you understand that this is actually something that could be useful quickly. Um, and then the website conversion is something that's been discussed by the select board. It was one of the first things they told me to look into um, because our presence on the web is very difficult to navigate. And we had one meeting to try to knock this number down. I have another meeting next week to get a more refined number. Right now, that's a placeholder. Um, I'm hoping to be able to bring that back as a, as a lower number. But again, with COVID impacting our ability to communicate, it's, it, it sort of rises to the top of some of the problems that staff and committees have run into in terms of pushing information out. To definitely have a lot of work to do there and the buildings and in inspections, electronic archiving. So it's not all in a file cabinet. Because That's a legacy. It's a legacy. That was here before I started looking at this. So we should, we should talk about that and figure out where that falls into our needs. Um, and then- I think he would say inspections first. He really wants yeah. that permitting software first. Yeah. And then the website conversion, did you talk about that just now? You probably Yeah, I just touched on it. It's an estimate yeah. right now. Yeah. I'm hoping to drill down to a better, better number, but ultimately it means the town has to do more work internally. And that's a time problem for us because we're not web people. Like I'm not a web, a web person. Right. So I don't understand the logistics of it. I do know we can get some technical assistance and we've had offers from residents to help us, but the real conversion 
means that we reorganize how information lives in the web. And mm -hmm. that's, that's a drill down, move documents, organize how they look and figure out what you want people to be able to do easily. And yeah. so there are different platforms we could use. Um, so we're trying to familiarize ourselves with some of those options and to see how we can drop the costs. Yep. So under the police department, um, next year in 2023, um, police closed uh, circuit TV system, I think needs to get up, upgraded. That's kind of how they view what's going on around the, around the police department and, and in the cells and all, I, I assume. Um, there's the mobile data terminals for the cruisers that uh, Chief did get a grant for that. And also yes received the grant for the police data migration so that's, yes. that's been wonderful uh do you want to speak to that i know jo i think john might john's be on and i just wanted to you know lob that attaboy out there because he's done a lot of work to get grants to cover some of this stuff yeah. so yeah. you know his his hvac request again covid really pointed out a serious problem for him in that in those office spaces well, that's, you still that's on john a new item uh, he may be. Oh, there he is. Yep, yep I'm here. Yep. Is there anything yep. you want to add about your project? The HVAC project? Yeah, I was going to say the uh, the closed caption uh, camera system's on for next year. We can always push that yep. off for another year or two. I just replaced those okay. servers um, yep. with uh, with Maya grant money probably three or four years ago. So we're, we can ultimately push that out a little bit further. The okay. HVAC system, my form pretty much spells the whole thing out. It is a 22-year-old system. It is not made anymore. Um, due to environmental, it needs to be upgraded. Ever since we built the police station in 1996, we've had to run a dehumidifier in there. So ultimately the system's never functioned properly since day one. Mm -hmm. um, if that system fails, you can't even buy those condensing units anymore. And I believe there are 22 units, they don't even make them. Yeah. So ultimately, I, I don't know what we would do other than buy portable air conditioning units and place them all around the police station. Yeah. The buildings, um, engineering firm that looked at the police station just said that we should put some mini split units in. The problem with the mini split units is you'd have to put literally 15 of them in there. And on top of that, you can't put them in jail cells. So we are, we're kind of limited in what we could do with the system. The system ultimately um, does go into failure. Deerfield Academy is kind enough and come down and fix, fixes it for free for us. And they've limped it along However, it is to the point where we need to start looking at an engineering firm to come in and design a new system for us and truly get a number that we can budget for, whether it be next year or even three years down the road. And maybe in the meantime, we do put in one or two mini split units to mm -hmm. at least take the edge off that existing system. Yep. So, yep, the, uh, the other numbers you mentioned, we did get grants for. Uh, yep. Those were in past years. The only request I have on for this year is $50,000 for the HVAC system. And like I said, that's actually split between engineering and do we throw a couple mini split units in to take some of the edge off of the current system. Okay. Thank you, John, very much. Um, yes, would that HVAC system serve the whole building? The town hall side as well? No, no. We have a couple mini splits in here. And I think, I'm not sure what happens in everybody else's little sections. Um, yeah, no, that, Julie, there's two different areas in the police station because you got to remember the town hall was built in the early 50s, that side of the building. The police department was ultimately taken to ground. We took out that three-story school structure and the police department was brand new in 1996. So they are two separate systems. And yeah. we actually have two zones with two different air handling units and two different condensers outside. So we'd be looking at replacing both of those. Um, the, uh, so the under public works is our, you know, the waste water, uh, clarifier repair, which has been done. Uh, we still need to pay for, but it's been done. And then the uh, wastewater treatment plant upgrades, um, you know, anticipated this year is the 11 four, which we hope to go out to bid for this month. Um, and then, you know, we have next year's, you know, uh, project and then, you know, ongoing, certainly we've got some work to do all over town on that. Um, we did uh, receive a, a grant. So uh, the other things under the were culvert replacement projects and Kelleher Drive replacement, those have been done or are in the middle of being done. 
um, we did receive a grant for the LED street lighting, which has been wonderful. I mean, that that was a big ticket item. I know that we were looking at early on, and I had been researching a bit, and then and then the I have to give my hat to the um, the energy committee. They they took it on and were able to um, to secure a green communities grant for that. So that they're in the midst of of getting that all together and get going. That was a that was a over a hundred thousand, right? I think a hundred and yes. Yeah, it was, it was over. A, it was 135, I think. Five or something. Yeah, it was a big, big job. And that's twice they did the boilers. You know, a couple of years back yes. at the elementary school, that was huge. So they've been they've been bringing us some good money. Um, so they've got the the freight liner is out to 2024. There's an F350 that's out at 2024. Um, the trackless boom mower. This is a new item. This, I believe, when I was talking, I, I borrowed the truck to do some work at the uh, church this weekend. I talked to, I got a chance to talk to Kevin for a bit, and um, we. Um, this, I believe, is replacing. And 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 if Kevin's on, he can he can. Oh, Kevin, your hands up. This is replacing the machine that does the sidewalks now. Correct. That is correct. Um, this this trackless boom mower is it's it's a trackless but it's more than just a boom mower it is the v plow it is the um over the guard rail mower it is the sweeper it's the uh snow blower um what else we attach to that we got a couple more attachments to go along with it it's like a um, and, and basically what my problem is is see this is due for replacement in in two more years um but we looked at it and and we said you know what our our loader, which is the next one down, the 2002 John Deere, was was due to be replaced this year. Um, we put some money into it two years ago, and uh, we think we can limp this one along a little bit longer, push that out. Um, but the track list definitely needs to be done. Um, if I am going to be continually snow blowing the sidewalks, which is seems like the direction I'm being told to go into, um, I need another unit. If I can, t if I want to keep the trackless as is, I'm going to dump 20 grand into it right off the bat. That's um, to split it in half, to fix all of the leaks. The computer itself is gone. Um, nothing works on the dashboard. The unit itself, I'm to, if I'm to replace it, is $130,000 for the bare unit. Now, if I want to go ahead and put a snowblower on it, because the snowblower we have is from 1980, which doesn't work anymore. It's just junk. Um, then I got to put another another 10.5 on top of that. And then as other things wear out, then we'll go ahead and have to replace those. So the thought process is, is we looked at what we had for the boom mower. We had um, Tri-County come down and take a look at what we had and get a price for trade-in. So we were able to take our track list along with all of our attachments and trade it in towards a new, um, uh, they call it a whacker. Uh, it's very similar to like Greenfield has, Sunderland has one. Um, so to get the unit along with all of the attachments being, I'm gonna, probably gonna forget one, so bear with me, uh, grapple, um, the mower head, the snow blower, the plow, the bucket, um, there was a total of seven attachments. Um, they were able to get everything for 105,000, which is everything is brand new for basically $20,000 less than it would be for just the bare unit if I was to replace the trackless. The other issue with the trackless is, is it comes from um, Canada, which basically means a lot of times we're, we're waiting on parts for weeks. Um, and presently right now, I'm spending $2,500 a month to make sure that I've got a snowblower available to take care of the sidewalks. So, so now there's an additional cost that I'm, I'm occurring right now to make sure that we are available to take care of the sidewalks. And the, and the idea is they have uh, the renting of kind of a smaller version of what they would like to get. Um, and it would again, replace something that costs quite a bit more. It's on its way out. It just seemed like, um, that would be able to do a lot more work and it's a little bit more heavy duty. It's kind of, if you imagine a, a a, a bobcat more on steroids. There's a lot more attachments that go on it, but it's that kind of bobcat machine. That's um, anyway. So that so that's the discussion on that item. Um, the John Deere uh, mower, uh, the 2002 John Deere load. Oh, excuse me, the loader. The large loader is out uh, for next year at 180. Um, and there's the 
X mark mower is 12,000. That's out again, uh, 2024. Um, we have the roadside mower is again, this is a payment as, uh, as a lot of people from capital know, this is a payment that the, um, it's a nice John Deere tractor, beautiful machine. Um, the Eversource pays for each year. Um, they give us the money. We make the payment. Each, each town gets to, um, that belongs in the roadside mower program gets to borrow it. Um, I think this is our last payment after that year. We, after this coming year, when we loan it out, we get it back. It is our machine. We no longer, um, have to make payments. we make the last payment, I think, and it's, and it's ours, um, which is a really nice machine. So that's the last, uh, last payment on that from them. Um, and then you have a, a roadside mower number two. Is that, can you explain that, Kevin, a little bit? I've got a vacuum going on here, so I can't really. So, so oh, that's that, that, that right there is your, your roadside mower, that 26,000. That so, so the roadside mower, I'm not sure what the two means. Uh, okay, two is just a, a footnote, 26,000 paid back annually by Eversource. FY uh, 2022 last year is what I see for a footnote. So, so the roadside mower is the one that you just spoke about, Trevor? Yes, yeah. thank you. The, the mini excavator, I think the CAT 305. Right. So, so, so the next one down, the mini, um, I'm asking again for the mini. Um, be honest with you, go ahead and, and throw another 4,000 on top of that because that's how much the price has gone up since last year. Okay. Uh, so, now, so now you're looking at 70,000 instead of 66. Um, Again, I'm, I'm going to continue asking for it. And each year that I don't, I'll just rent one. Yep. Um, and then we have a large, uh, the sidewalks. Um, this was a number we got for an estimate. We just kind of said how much to pave. This is, it's a little bit all over the place, depending on what you end up using for material, uh, whether you're doing cement or how far you're doing cement, where you're using the, um, the asphalt. So I think we need to do a mixture depending on where we are in town, but we needed to get some sort of a number and we can go ahead, Casey, go ahead. No, that's exactly what I was going to say. So there's two things about this. This is some sort of a number to give people a framework about how, how much it costs. Mm -hmm. um, however, you can break it down over a time period, like build it out for five years and understand that the number changes mm -hmm. year to year because costs usually increase. The other thing you can do is you can consider, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it right now because of capacity issues, but there may be opportunities which we are not built to take on right now to utilize some of these grant programs the state has. In fact, that's how Waitley did their sidewalks over the summer, right. last summer. Yep. The problem is, is you got to have the shovel ready project. So I lay that out there as a consideration, but understand that this is a project or this is been a, a projected request through the select board that was brought to my attention, how it gets managed in terms of the money and the build out of timeline isn't up to me. And it's just, I want you to see a framework of what it looks like. And who, do, and who does what with partnerships? So uh, go ahead, Kevin. Uh, just so everybody's aware that 503,000 does not include Sugarloaf Street. Right. right. Yes. This is just, this was really going from downtown kind of down towards frontier on both sides and then from from kind of frontier all the way down to jackson road you know to the dry bridge pretty right. much um in all Darefield. kevin kevin what Florida. was it what was the timeline on the sugar loaf um from the state what, what, what have you heard lately uh it that that's a moving target i mean i was told i was told three different times last year that they were going to pave sugar loaf before the end of the year and didn't happen Shame on me! I didn't ask what year. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, allegedly they're 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 talking with you know I talked with Jeff Ashman and he says that you know he's hearing rumors that they're talking about doing it again. But I've gone and I've looked on the Mass State you know DOT their their projects. I don't see that anywhere where it's where it's funded yet. We need another meeting with DOT. Is really what we, we've got to have another meeting to talk about Park Street and Sugarloaf Street. John, you've got your hand up too. John Pereski, you're on mute. There you oh. go. Whoop. Yep, you're good. You're good. We can hear Does you. Does it now. include Elm Street? Yes. Uh, yes. And, and again, that's that holistic thing where I want it to look, 
you know, I, when we do this stuff, I don't want to just say, oh, we're going to throw, you know, 100,000 at Elm Street. I want it to really fit in so that when we do this stuff, it looks like every other spot in town. Like when we go to do this, it needs to be a master plan where we've picked out the curbing. We've picked out how far back the cement goes before we start the asphalt. You know, it just has a holistic feel and it looks like the whole town was planned out and done correctly when we can afford it where we need to do it first and how it ties into the other projects we're doing um i really want kind of a, a more of a master plan of what that looks like but so that's that's a big number but it's there and it really depending on you know does does our highway dpw do some prep on it if they don't do that what are what if they're doing that what else aren't they have time to do and where do we um partner with some other people that maybe find some other ways to save some money so there's a lot to think about in that number, but it's, you know, we need to get working on sidewalks for sure. Um, let's see. So under skims, we have some asphalt paving and an exhaust system. We, you know, we never did end up getting an exhaust system for the ambulances when they back into, you know, usually you hook your tube and it sucks all the, the fumes out of the building. We don't have that yet. We knew we were going to have to pay for that. And we are building up rent money as we do this. And I assume that would probably get paid out of retained earnings um, and, uh, and yes, some... the asphalt, the asphalt and the exhaust system would come out of our um, rent money. Okay, uh, Jack, Jack, you had a question. So are those, are those numbers are share Deerfield share? We own the building. So they're all of ours, I think. Yep. Jack, Jack, the funding would come from the scams rent, which Did Deerfield get... contributes yeah. about 50%. So that's the total cost, but in fact, Deerfield is on the hook as rent money. It's already been paid and we pay 50% of that. Okay, got it. Yep. So just, just so you're aware, uh, by the end of this fiscal year, we're only gonna have $81,000 total in that capital stabilization fund. It's not even worth setting up a stabilization fund if we're going to be using it that quickly. <laughs> just saying. I, I, uh, Brenda, we know. We just put it in there. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully we're not going to be, I, I don't see anything else large happening over there. You know, right. the, the asphalt right. paving was, you know, we, we collectively as a town had to keep our nose out of it. So it, it wasn't done as optimal as possible. And again, the exhaust system, that was just one more thing that was, we weren't involved in it. So we weren't allowed to do anything with right. it. Yep. So with that being said, realistically, those two units right there that you're looking at um, is they are big ticket items. But after that, um, I really don't see much of what you're gonna have over there. Um, again, because it's such a new building, right. you, know, you are gonna have some maintenance that you're gonna have to provide, but it's yep. not gonna be a huge amount. Yeah, that's that. why. That's why we're thinking. Um, the board is thinking of um, recommending taking some money out of retained earnings. Um, you know, the just the regular stabilization count to cover some of these expenses, or to put it put it off for another year. You know, yeah. like the paving or whatever. Break yeah. it up. A quick question. Yeah, go Jeff, ahead. Jeff. Jeff. Yeah. Quick question or comment. Uh, I have worked in large buildings or, you know, uh, buildings where they've used exhaust systems and there's different types of exhaust systems. And I would just a word of caution using a whole building exhaust system, you know, it's, it's fine. You know, like summer, you can have doors open and so on and so forth, but your colder periods of time, if you're using a whole building exhaust system, uh, it doesn't take long to suck all that heat out of out of that building, yeah. and so I would just I just say a word of caution that you might want to look at the various types of systems because I I know in the building that I worked and if you once you take that heat out of there it takes a long time to recover and it's also very expensive for that to recover. So uh, just a word of caution that we may want to pay attention to the different types of exhaust systems out there for that building and uh, do, our, do our homework, do due diligence, that's all. 
I think yeah. right, and I, I believe um, my understanding, and maybe Kevin can weigh in too, because he's got a hand up, is that these were going to be like systems that you put on the exhaust um, pipe itself and not sucking everything out of the building all at that's once. True. That, that's that's true. That would be, that would be that, great. Yeah, that, exactly yeah. what we just put into the fire station is what you'd be looking at to put in okay, there. Good. So we got and not only that, but it is now a federal requirement. Yeah. So, yeah. so realistically, right. Oh, sure. right. uh, the exhaust system we have to put in this year. Okay. All right. Yeah. If not, you're going to start getting violations. Yep. Yeah. So, no, that makes sense. <laughs> yes. Uh, so then we've got, um, let's see, we've got senior, senior needs and center projects. So we have, uh, you know, uh, senior housing. We need to figure out what we're doing with, with senior housing. And I know there's some work going around in the back on that. There's the uh, senior center church feasibility study that kind of got X'd out because I think so really what what we have right now is a senior needs assessment and feasibility need um, and and what we have done as a town is <laughs> we get money allocated to us through FERCOG from the state for uh, technical assistance and these are grants that can help you do different things um, we have requested Deerfield uh, Deerfield's requested Sunderland and Waitley have all requested that their DT, DT LA fund allocate allocation their number one request would go to a senior um senior center needs assessment and feasibility study so we're hoping that with all of us regionally working together we could get a grant or at least some funding from FERCOG and maybe other grants to help help with that cost um so that's kind of we're waiting to hear i think that that, that closes on friday or last friday it closed um so we'll be hearing soon whether we get that um and then, so we're going to start moving. And again, I'm anxious to hear um, the building assessments uh, presentations. Casey, go, go ahead. You had I just wondered if you wanted John to sort of flesh out what yeah. the, what the approach has been. Please, yeah, John. Is John Pachurik, if you're on, I know you've been working on this a bit too. Yeah, sorry, I'm a little sporadic, just dropping the boys off at soccer. But my, okay. uh, take your time. yeah, yeah, no, I'll do uh, do the best I can. We've met with two different companies. Uh, one was UMass Boston um, with a professor out there that does regional studies for actual uh, community needs between Waitley, Sunderland, and Deerfield. So they would host community meetings as well as mailing out and using the internet to do surveys of anybody that's 50 and older, what the future thoughts are and what people would be engaged in. Would you use, um, you know, a pool room? Would you use a gymnasium? Whatever it may be. So the goal is to figure out what is going to bring the community together. Because we know the more seniors that we can get out and keep them together, the, uh, we can extend their life expectancy. We can watch out for each other. We can identify medical concerns that they may not readily identify themselves when we see them every day. So the goal is to get people together. We also met with Dietz architectural firm um, for the same thing. And we've got two different financial proposals from them. And as Trevor and Casey summarized, we're looking for uh, you know, the vision of local technical assistance, trying to get some grant funding to make that happen. So the goal is to figure out what people's requests are. Then the second part becomes is the feasibility study. So what would bring people together? But then can we afford it? And, and as part of the feasibility study, they actually look at different sites and buildings and what it would cost to renovate or is it uh, more financially prudent to start fresh? And all that would be outlined by the, uh, the architecture firm that was in the second phase of this. So again, phase one, is really what does the community want? It's that engagement in the studies. And phase two is, can we afford the desires of the community? Mm -hmm. If so, how can we proceed forward? Do we look at federal and state grants? Yeah, so that's, uh, that's the goal at this point. And, and how do we do it uh, regionally with our partners, you know, with our neighboring towns? Um, you know, we, we even love to have Conway join us, you know, and but they may have a need, you know, may want, have wants to go to different communities. Um, so we just are keeping all of our options open and want to work regionally. You always get a better option for a grant when you're working together like that. Um, 
and and we do work very well together our three towns on on many fronts so the the goal is to try and pull our resources together get a get a study and um figure out if we can afford what we can afford so, casey go ahead <clears throat> that forty two thousand five is actually a combination of the town deerfield's cost mm -hmm. for the portions of those though that work okay. um, and again it's it's actually detailed in the capital project request that's attached to this to this spreadsheet thank you for that work uh john Pereski, you had your hand up too is the uh the congregational church the church yep. is that in here anywhere what's no that is it the cost to bring it up to what we need to do is that in here buried in some other number a bit scratched out there if you look but go ahead casey well there's a reason so i think one of the things that i would recommend john is julie has scheduled with the town building advisory committee has scheduled two information sessions to go over the findings that grla came up with in their building assessments one of which was the church yeah. so that's an opportunity to listen to what they came up with for information when they evaluated the buildings the studies e each section in other words each building um each one of those reports is available on the website they're very long so it's it's hard to print but one of the reasons that julie and the rest of her committee group did that is to really push the information out so you have a better understanding of what grla which is the architectural firm came up with as recommendations based on those evaluations. So there's a reason you see that X'd out. And I think she's, the meetings are the 14th and the 27th, right, Julie? Right, it's this coming Saturday and then two weeks from this coming Saturday from 10 to 11.30, um, they'll be by Zoom. Yep. Um, and the notices are on the website, on the yes. test website. Okay. And yep. all of those reports are available. If you go to the town building advisory committee page, the, the reports are on the page if you want to look at the reports in advance. Will this capital projects plan be updated once that happens? Yes. 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 So this is all food for thought. You guys are going to give some direction about what you want to see as you chew on this a little more. But this gives you a sort of, and I know it's overwhelming, Jack, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jack Davey, I know it's overwhelming. The point is, is give you a framework of the things that are out there on radar screens. Yep. And so the church versus, the church senior center question came in, it was a legacy item. Um, but the senior center needs assessment and feasibility really came to fruition in the last five months. So, and, and in order to figure out what to do with the building, you figure out what your needs are. What are your senior services needs? And really John took that on as a deep question once he started to see and the rest of the TBAC started to see what those evaluative reports looked like from GRLA. And I'm gonna to get to you, Kevin, real quick. Carolyn, you had your hand up first. And I'm, I, I'm just really encouraging all the um, capital committee and the finance committee to please, yes. please come to Julie's presentations because I'm this is, this will help us inform us to make a good decision. And it's really, really important. The pandemic has really shown us that we have an inadequate building. We cannot offer services um, the way we're set up right now. And I'm really sad that we're not using this downtime to do more things, but I, I don't want to invest any money into the senior, current senior center until we have a definitive plan going forward. But we've got to get moving on this because we are not servicing our seniors. Yeah. Kevin? Yeah, I just want to bring it up that um, we do presently right now have $15,750 in capital church feasibility. Um, but that is the problem is, is it says the church feasibility. So because of how it was appropriated, we're not allowed to use that money for anything besides the church. And collectively, as we have seen from the reports, we were looking at basically just trying to save the money by not utilizing that for feasibility for the simple fact that the, the building itself is not feasible as, yeah. far, as, as far as we see. So just, right. just so everybody's aware, there was money put off to a side 
we did um, for the church feasibility. But again, you know, we wanted to use it, but we can't because it's very specific to the church. That's yeah. how it was appropriated. Yeah, and I think we had 25 originally back and then we used some of that for this assessment, but it could only be used for the church. And so we had this money left over that really is may have to get reappropriated re at some point. Um, Trevor, it's John. Can I talk for one sec? Sure, John, go ahead. So the elephant in the room that you've said a couple of times, but I'm not sure people really picked up on it, is GRLA and our architectural experts have recommended that the church come down. Yes. So yeah. we need that highlighted. We need the townspeople to weigh in on that. And absolutely the capital and the finance committee, it's very important for you to ask the architect and the structural engineer the questions directly because I'm not an expert, I'm on the committee. Julie's as close to an expert as it comes. She's utterly amazing. I am not. So I would prefer everybody possible be on that meeting because it's very emotional. And I want people to make a solid, educated decision based on experts weighing in. Yeah. So thank you, John. That's true. It is, it is tough because people have been married there. They've, they've buried their loved ones there. They've seen their yes. children Christian there. It's, um, it's been a part of Deerfield's life for well over 200 years. So um, it's, yeah, it's important. Can I just have the date, time, and access for that meeting for the minutes? Yes. Um, and we could email you those links, or Julie maybe could. Yeah. Um, there I'll is email coming, them to you. The first one, the GRLA meeting is this coming Saturday, the 13th from 10 to 11.30 a.m. And the um, if you go on the website, on the town website, it's on the calendar as a town building advisory committee meeting. So if you click there, it gives you the agenda with the link, just like yep. in the town meeting. And then the second one will be just two weeks following that same time. And that'll the be- The second for, one is the 27th. And that's the report from the Western New England University professor who runs the polling institute who helped us with the survey that we did. It's been a year now. It was a year ago last fall. Um, but he has a compiled report of the results of that um, survey. Yep. And that, that also is available on the- <laughs> Advisory committee page on the town website. Thank you. So tell your friends, tell everybody to come to the meeting. It's um, very important, and we'd love to hear everybody's opinion. So and hear hear from the experts. The the last item on this list um, under senior housing needs is the senior center roof. This was mainly came out of that study as a kind of a ballpark idea. Hey, if we're going to change the roof, this is about how much it's going to cost. We have had. Uh, Mahan uh, Slate Roofing, I think John met with them, brought them up there, uh, looked at the roof. He didn't see anything serious that needs to happen right away. You know, you do have some condensation, some dripping from, you know, it's just an old roof and there's no vapor barrier underneath the slate. So you get condensation and stuff, but I don't think there's anything serious. There are areas down below that have that flat section where it goes down in the basement that leak. Um, but that's not the slate roof and that doesn't cost 91,000, but there are areas where water is weak leaking into the basement and that's through that kind of that other little part of a roof. But um, so anyway, so that, so that probably would be pushed off or that was, you know, again, something to talk about, but we had, we'd need to get more information. We'll get that information from the experts again and we'll, We'll poke them and say, why did you think we need that roof? So, um, and yeah, so Trevor, can I, can I jump in there for one second? Yep. So, yep. I did meet with the owner of my hand roofing who, uh, who works at Deerfield Academy, uh, does all slate roofs. He's owned the company for 30 some odd years. Uh, pretty amazing guy. He did crawl up in the attic. He went up through all of, all of the eaves up there. He looked at the watermarks. He looked at the dust up there to see if any dust had been moved around with recent rainstorms. And from the outside of the building, he sat there and described to me each tile, where it came from, and he could tell by the color and the scope of it. And I, I literally am just rolling my eyes. And he, he described in utter detail. And we lost John. <laughs> <laughs> but he did describe everything. It's just an amazing man with uh, amazing talent. You're getting to the good part. Yes, I know. 
Is he yeah, back? we're gonna do oh, there you are. There you are. Sorry. We lost you there, John. Oh, sorry. Let's so he yep, he went inside and uh, he went upstairs and he said, So you're gonna renovate this building. And I said, Yeah, I mean that's the ultimate goal is we have to do something. We're only using one floor right now, and it doesn't make sense. He goes, There's nothing you should touch on this roof currently. And he said, To replace this roof with a slate roof, you're gonna end up doing asphalt. And I said, Well, what do you mean by that? What, what would a replacement slate roof cost? And he said, non-prevailing wage, about $600,000. Wow. Prevailing wage, he said, you almost could double it. So, and I said, yeah, no, we probably will go with asphalt, but I certainly appreciate you showing up. <laughs> that, yeah, that's kind of where we left it. All right. Yep. So that certainly can be pushed off. Yep. A so, quick, quick comment, Jeff Upton, quick comment on that. Sure. As far as senior center. Yeah, as far as senior center, I, I believe that there was a, uh, a a review on that building already, and just the exterior. They talked about the work that needs to be done on the exterior brick on that, and it was an estimate of over a million dollars. And this was several years ago. Yeah, that's just you, just, you, just something to keep in mind. Again, once again. Yes. So we do have a copy of the report from that assessment um, that, and that was provided to GRLA when they went through and GRLA has done a, um, an assessment also. So we'll, yeah, please come we and do listen. We have the report from that. Yeah, listen to them, yeah. what they think. I, you know, I, I, I thought there would be a takedown of a building too, but then everything that we've heard says, no, you can, you know, you, it has good bones, you could, you could renovate, you know, put an elevator in or off to the side or something and fix up the roof, fix up the building and, and, and keep it. Maybe it's not a senior center. It doesn't, you know, need to stay a senior center. Maybe it's a town hall. Maybe it's something different. Maybe, you know, but maybe it does come down. So all those things uh, we should talk about. Again, those are emotional too. Um, same kind of ties to the building, although more of an education thing there. So um, the last large item here is the Tilton Library. Uh, this is $8 million. We've been kind of had, had this number kind of hanging out over us for, for several years as, as the trustees have been in the system. Uh, when I say the system, the state system for uh, grants for uh, the library, I believe we pay, you know, like the school, 50% of that when it, when it comes around. And um, I believe that the total bill is about 8 million or it was several years back with some inflation built in. So it should be about that. Um, again, we would all need to kind of dig in on that again, but it may be on, I don't know if it's on hold. Casey, you've got your hand up. Do you know any? Yes, back? I asked Candace that question last week and I provided her answer as an email in the packet. Okay. Um, basically the state hit pause when COVID hit. Yep. We could be notified that we would get the grant this year, but Candace is, is reticent to say that that would happen this year. It possibly could happen because there's, I think we're fifth on the list. Mm -hmm. So there's people ahead of us and it might be better if it did hit in 23 because we would A, be higher up on the list and B, maybe in a better financial position if revenues start to, to mm -hmm. rebuild themselves as the pandemic moves along. Yeah. And I think just for a picture of the state, you know, revenues have been certainly down, but not as dramatic as you would think. Um, you know, the cherry sheets are, are pretty, pretty even, uh, you know, they're, it's not, uh, it's not a dire, like the end of the world, but, but there really is, uh, there have been some revenues coming in, tax revenues and stuff, but there are a lot of businesses have obviously failed and, and, you know, different industries are, are really tough. And then there's other industries like the building industry that are through the roof. I've never seen it so busy in my career um, in 20 years. It's just been unbelievable how much work there is right now, but um but, you know, so it's, it's really hard to t get a full picture. When we were at the MMA, uh, we wouldn't go to the MMA, but we sat for a couple of days on, on the meetings and, and listened to the outlook and the economic outlook. And, you know, they have been able to hold their own a bit. So um, they did have rainy day funds that we, they spent, uh, but they, um, it's just not as dire as everybody had feared, which is great. It's not as great as we'd like either, but um, just, you know, it's just kind of a bit of a holding pattern until we get through this, um, this budget season. So. 
anyone add to that, Casey? Or? Well, just the thing I wanted to let everybody know, and I try to push these notices that DLS sends out or DOR sends out. Mm -hmm. um, the governor's committed to a certain amount of unrestricted government aid at a percentage that is the same as they anticipate revenues to be. Um, however, there's other changes with it from a full on budget perspective. There's other changes in school aid that are not fleshed out. Mm -hmm. And so that's a comment that I'm throwing out there because I, I had a meeting with Darius this mm -hmm. afternoon and he basically warned us March 31st, may, we may not have a drop dead budget for you. Right. And we need everybody to understand that it's because there are so many uncertainties out there, not only for him internally, but for the state itself. So yeah. keep that in mind. Things are fluctuating very much like COVID is fluctuating on an hourly basis. Things are fluctuating in the budget on a, on a, in a way that we can't anticipate every piece of information having it very quickly. I think, I, think I also, I just want to also mention that um, FEMA, we will be getting some money from FEMA, but it's not clear how much and how much is going to be like an extension of the CARES Act, which covered a lot of our expenses. FEMA is not as good because as you know, it's 75% reimbursement of our actual expenses. Whereas um, the COVID CARES Act covered our actual expense. So what we're trying to do is, is be ready on how to um, apply for funding, depending on how the new administration is going to send us money. But there is no question some money is coming. We just don't know how and we don't know which form. Yeah. But Kevin, John, Casey, Barbara, everybody, Brenda, everybody is holding receipts. So what is the most advantageous to us, we will be, and we go to every darn meeting that there is on any of this stuff. So we're hoping very, very much to um, be in a, a little, have a little clearer picture. And I would say within the next month. Uh, also, um, yeah, crossing our fingers. The other thing is too, you know, I've, I've been in on the budget meetings with this uh, Deerfield Elementary School and, and, and paying attention a bit to Frontier. Um, you know, we obviously we didn't go up last year in our budget. We, I mean, it went up a little bit, but we really held held the budget last year. Um, you know, that that bill comes due this year. And the, the, the thing that's hurting the schools the most is the revolving funds. We have no way to normally in a good year when everybody's, you know, happy and going to school and all together. You can you can pack a lot of kids into our preschool, um, and so we we generate quite a bit of money that way, um, and we pay for the teachers and the aides and everything to get the kids learning at at an early age. Well, because they haven't been able to um, pack a lot of kids in there, the, only the kids that really had the needs could come, and those typically didn't come with a with a paycheck. They you know they were getting services, so that kind of revenue that we would normally bring in just isn't coming in. So we've had to shift all of that money that we would normally fund through, uh, through revenue, uh, through those, to those revolving funds to school choice. And we did that last year and we can't do it again this year. We might have to do some of that, but um, we also have no revenue coming in for school lunches. So you have about a hundred thousand dollars in pre-K that we'd normally fund and we'd had, you know, roughly thirty thousand dollars through the through the um, lunch program that we would normally fund, and we haven't been able to fund any of that. Some of those some of those deficits may be able to be funded, as Casey was saying, from money from the state that that may be coming, but it's up in the air, and we don't really have a good picture on what we can spend that money on. How much we'll get? Will it cover that? So we're really looking at you know, a pretty, pretty sizable increase this year. Um, but I think the goal is looking at where can we make cuts to uh, personnel if we have to, um, where, where can we spend some of the school choice money without, I mean, we're spending it fast. And, you know, we, we were fortunate enough for Deerfield to have a good cushion there over the last few years. But what we have done under direction is to kind of lower our school choice, lower those those children coming in. So that revenue has dropped off immensely and the expenses are still there. So we've got to figure out, you know, how to make a balance of school choice, 
positions if needed, and um, some help from the town. So, Casey. And so to build on that, which is one of the things that, um, two things, they're just starting to look at the budget and the revenue funds that they're using to support the needs out there as the savings accounts, essentially. Is that what, that's what Darius, that's right. kind of the way Darius explained it exactly. to me. Yep. Won't be replenished for quite a, for at least a couple of years, because if people, if you don't have as many people using preschool, you're not getting that funding. And it's not just Deerfield. It's all yep. four towns are seeing some version of this. And the food service, it, it's really, there was an increase in food service in, in at times that we didn't anticipate. And the only way to meet those needs was to use those revenue funds. Mm -hmm. So we can't kick that too far down, kick that can too far down because either way you have to make it up at some point. Yep. And so I think you're going to see some Darius and Shelly try to approach this creatively, but we won't, as a group, these two groups and the select board probably won't hear about it soon because they have to go through their entire like budget discussion, you know, their in-depth discussions, right, Trevor? Yeah, normally we would have had like, we, we saw a second round of it last week and, you know, normally we'd be bringing a budget in March, right? And, and I don't think we'll have a budget in March because we've got to figure out what the state can bring in and how we're going to create if we do this. Um, it's just definitely going to go up a bit um, this this year, uh, just to pay for what we didn't go up last year and these expenses that we have had to pay for, for through school choice. So we'll try to find a, a balance there, but I just want to give you guys a picture of where that's at. And then Frontier is kind of in that same boat. You know, um, I think our exposure right now is uh, 200 and something thousand. It was a 200, $200,000 increase, I guess. So they're big numbers, you know, I think it was 130 or 150 in the elementary and about 200 at Frontier, so. Um, the good news is, is our, our school aid is pretty much level funded. We're mm -hmm. not getting penalized under the new formula. And uh, we are working with this woman um, who is assistant uh, commissioner for, and she is really, really um, interested in helping us get a waiver so that we are not penalized under the new formula. So Casey, we sent all kinds of information out. It was wonderful. She advocated to us. It looks like we're gonna get a waiver. I don't know what the impact is, but um, when the cherry sheets came out, we were not penalized. Yep. Okay. Jeff Upton with a finance question. Sure. Yes, I was wondering uh, what instructions were the department heads given as far as uh, level fund increase 3%, 2 uh, has there or has there not been any instruction to the department heads at this point? The budget memo went out. We requested level services. If there was an increase that was necessary, i.e. solid waste and sludge disposal, that should have, that we asked people to identify it. Um, and have the explanation for it as we've done in the past, Jeff. And you should have okay. a copy of that in your email. Rather than say um, level funding, we're saying level services, Jeff, just like we did last year. It's very hard um, when we don't know <laughs> what's happening. I mean, we don't really know the final impact on this pandemic. So rather than talk about dollars, because we don't actually know the impact, we're going to. Yeah, no, I just, the, the reason why I asked is just the finance committee understands where this is all coming from and where we're supposed to be, what our target is to hit is the reason why I asked. So if we're level services, if that's the dictation that was given, at least we as a finance committee understand that now. So when we start looking at budgets, uh, you know, we'll be able to, uh, uh, you know, figure that in. Yeah, that's that's was definitely the the kind of the request, and then to kind of evaluate on on case, you know, what what changed, you know, what was something majorly different? Do we have to provide different services? I mean, for you know, public health is, it's a massive change in service delivery this year than it was last year, just because of, 
you know, all the COVID and the contact tracing and all of that. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely uh, our goal is to kind of keep it as, as slim as we can until we can figure out where we're at. Um, Brenda, do you, did you want to kind of say where we're at as far as, you know, revenues go and the picture? I mean, I think our, our taxes are, had come in pretty much on target and I would say so. And, and I think all of the other revenues are certainly on track with what we budgeted. Yeah. Um, many of you got the report for January. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it, but, um, but I think we look pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. It feels, I mean, we did lower our, our expectations for sure. So, but yeah. we are still coming in on, on target. So it feels and, like, and yet, you know, some of those budgets that, and, and I, I admit some of those budgets are small, but some of them we've already received the whole year's worth that we were expecting. So, um, so we're, we'll be all right. Yeah. Seems like we'll be in good shape. Uh, again, what's really, really important is to understand that we're very conservative in our calculations. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure there was more to that sentence. <laughs> So um, does anyone else have any questions? I mean, I, this was a very fruitful meeting. I'm glad that you all stuck it out for listen to where we're at. Um, any other questions with anybody? I know you, Karen. <laughs> um, anybody? No, else? the only thing worth mentioning, Trevor, is the uh, Criminal Justice Reform Act. Oh, thank and you. The finances yeah. associated with it. I get in trouble because of Yep, yep, yep. So yep. Uh, yeah, go, go ahead if you want to touch base on that, John, because it is important for everybody to hear what's going on. Yeah, I mean, we could literally spend an hour, hour and a half on it, and I think we are going to at a, at a near select board meeting. Um, but ultimately, the state did sign into law a Criminal Justice Reform Act on December 31st of 2020. Uh, a lot of it goes into effect July 1st of 21. And, you know, it effectively eliminates part-time police officers in the Commonwealth. It also mandates that police departments are certified. The law lists eight mandated criteria. However, certification by police department standards, if you go by MPAC, the Massachusetts Police Accreditation Commission, is 159 criteria. So there's a lot happening in policing right now. There was about, I think, 17 or 19 different committees formed. One was the body camera committee. So I do want to see that report when it comes out in, uh, in late 22 to see what the recommendations are and whether they actually um, would like to mandate uh, body cameras, cruiser cameras statewide, whether the legislature actually puts any funding forth, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So the bottom line is, is all part-time police academies that have not been running as of January 1st have been canceled. We are not allowed to appoint part-time police officers after July 1st. All new police officers will have to be taken a statewide test uh, by the Police Officer Standards and Training Commission. After that test, they will have to go to an oral board. They will have to go through a physical, meaning a fitness test and a uh, body physical. They will go through a psychological test. It is ultimately an amazing thing because we have a certification and decertification process. However, it takes the personalization out of local police departments. It's very difficult for me as a chief of police or other members of the police department to go out and actively recruit citizens in Deerfield and start them off in policing part-time and see how well they represent the citizens and how well they treat the citizens for a year or two before we select them for a full-time status. Because we are so picky under this new system, we cannot do that. Right. It is... There's a lot of challenges with it. Um, if we can't find part-time police officers, the operational cost of the police agency is dramatically going to go up. And in Deerfield, we may be able to, um, to meet all these goals and opportunities. However, it is in fact going to eliminate a lot of the small town police departments. Yeah. And it, uh, it is going to be extremely troublesome yeah. for a lot, a lot of departments out there. You get Charlemont that sees two to 6,000 people a day for river rafters in the summer. And they have four to six part-time police officers on during the day just to try and mitigate any alcohol or other behavioral issues. And those people are all going to be in a very tough position. And I'm not sure Charlemont can even afford that. 
yeah. very, very tough times ahead. It is. And, and I think, you know, there's a, there's many good things that came from, from, you know, uh, from the bill and, and the society moving in a way of, uh, you know, um, accountability and, and that kind of thing and setting some standards. A lot of this stuff was already done by our police department. We, you know, we were already uh, way ahead of the curve, especially in Massachusetts, but, and, and then especially here in Deerfield is that we, um, you know, we're very proactive and we do a lot of community policing. So my biggest fear is a lot of these small towns are going to wind up without a police department or will have the state police covering. You, you just get a lot further distance away from your residents. Um, you don't have that personal interaction of, uh, of the part-time guy on Saturday or something who knows everybody and sees everybody at the dump. You, you know, the, the, police department has to hire more full-time people. My biggest fear is you put all this money into training and they just go to some other place. I don't, I don't know how we're going to be able to afford to do the training. Um, you know, but before we would step them into it and get them going a little at a time and um, have a good eye on, on them and, and evaluate and then decide, yeah, this, this is the one, this is the one that we're going to send through the system. Um, it's going to be a lot tougher now. And I just worry about not having that personal connection to local residents and having that knowledge locally. Um, and, and the cost is just really, I'm, I'm very worried about that. So, um, so the other things are good, you know, we need to move along in, in, in some of our other, other changes and, and bring the, bring everybody up to speed, but, but this, this is going to be tough budget wise for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, for the, the routine folks out there that don't understand between part and full time, this is the difference between looking at a LPN nurse or an RN nurse and looking at every long term health care agency in Massachusetts and saying, we're eliminating LPNs. Yep. Every ambulance service out there, we're eliminating basic EMTs. Every call and volunteer fire department, unless you are full time academy trained, you are not allowed to respond and fight a fire at somebody's house that's the equivalent of what we are going through in policing right now we at mass chiefs had advocated for post the police officer standard and training for certification and decertification we've advocated for it for the last three legislative cycles so we are absolutely on board we're excited we love it love it love it now we've got to deal with the flip side of this with only one training standard and the exact language of the law being in compliance, it's, it's going to depersonalize our recruitment process. Yep. So um, I think that's a wrap. So is anybody, um, anybody, any other questions on, um, on our meeting tonight? We'll, I guess you, you know, finance co committee and capital will go on to do their work. Um, we'll have to kind of help with, you know, the select board will help in narrowing down and shifting some of these items that, you know, we need to, um, so it's not all falling on Jack to figure out what 19 items are happening this, this year. Um, more than 19 now, actually. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't realize it's, it's more than 19. Yeah, it is a lot. So we'll, we'll help with that, Jack, for sure. We don't expect, um, expect a miracle there for sure. So, but we'll, we'll help guide that a bit too. And, um, um, let's see. There are, so we're going to, the CIPC, could a, a CIPC member uh, make a motion to adjourn? Jack, before we do that, Jack, before we do that, uh, do you have any idea when you want the CIPC to meet for their next meeting, or will you send out an email to everybody? Uh, I'm going to send out an email to everybody and see what everybody's schedule is and see what, um, you know, what kind of response. Zoom. Okay. I think we should probably meet um, first part of next week. Um, so, but but I'll definitely send out an email and um, uh, see if we can set something up for for next week at some point. Okay, thank thank you. I need to talk about. Yep. Thank you. Sorry, Carolyn. No, no. <laughs> I just will make that motion. You need to you need to second it, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, I'll second that. Yeah, all in favor? Uh, Jack Davy, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Jeff Upton, aye. Mark Brennan, aye. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. And the committee is adjourned at uh, seven fifteen. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone.
uh, Finance Committee, you want to do your adjournment? I'll yes, make a motion do. to start end the Finance Committee meeting <laughs> on February 8th. We have a second. Second, James uh, Campion. Right. James seconded. Welcome, James, and thank you. All right. Julie Chalf and I. John Pereski, yes. Allison Vanderbilt, and yes. Skip Olmstead, yes. I saw Jack, yeah, Jack uh, Paturik, yes. Jack, Jack, you're muted. Yeah, he was muted, but he said yes. I saw that. <laughs> Read the lips. All Bye, right. everybody. All right. We're adjourned at 7.15. Yep. Good night. And I'll Casey, make can I ask you a quick question if you're still here? Yeah. Sure. He's done. Sure. Do we, do we um, um, adjourn, Trevor? Yeah, uh, no, we haven't yet, but um, go ahead, Julie, if you want to ask a question. No, I just want to ask Casey a, an administrative thing. Oh, okay. So then I'll make a motion to adjourn the select board tonight. And I thank you all very much for taking your time out tonight to join us on this. Yes, I, I want to say thank you very much. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll make, I'll second Trevor's motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, thank everybody, you. for everybody. coming. Yep. And thank you, Trevor, for running this meeting. Oh, sure. With yep. stabler in. <laughs> right. We got to get you some sort of booster. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll head off. And uh, thank you. Julie. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Jeff. Okay.